your psychic intellect and made you my puppet. It's the Bullseye! And here's your host, Jim Bowie! Today is a good day to die. Prepare for running speed! Sir, there's another starship coming in. It's the Enterprise. What do you think you're doing? Keeping the British hand up, sir. Nobody does! <laughs> Sorry if I scared you, you'll like this bit. Good evening, going on, man. That took me, took me by surprise. That took me by surprise. Oh, man. Did that just go out just now? Oh, I'm telling you, the time change does doesn't do my head in does twitter in does uh youtube in um does Substack in? i i, I set everything go out at six o'clock didn't go out at six o'clock right six o'clock my time four o'clock your time uh, um and then uh 4 30 your time in the in the uk for uh uh the second set reminds all oh, what's that a little bit Little bit of, uh, little bit of smuts on my screen oh yes I ladies and good evening guys good morning uh, uh, i have to tell you i like my sunday intro i think my sunday intro is Really one of my best. It's kind of like the best of everything. I, I look, Honestly, I say this every time I say it, that scene from First Contact is probably, for me, the pinnacle of Star Trek Next Generation, right? The new ship coming in. It's in a... Uh, and it's a trap. I mean, all these things are uh, uh, absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Not absolutely fantastic. Is They're having a slow, drawn-out uh, uh, rollout of all the... Um, uh, of all the titles, I think they just released the seventh one, uh, and it's just like none of them are very good, right? None of them are very good. We'll go through them soon, but they're like, wow, is that there's no like talons of Wing Chiang there, right? There's no uh, uh, dragon fire. These are all like these are all like really kind of naff titles, and I just noticed the Doctor Who logo is missing from them. Well, that's weird. That's weird. One second, let me just save this last one. That was number seven. So in a half hour, we'll get number eight. Should we look at those now? Oh, no, I don't know. Let's wait. Let's wait for a little bit. We'll wait for that half an half hour or so, so till everything uh, fills up a little bit more. But yeah, continuing the trend of being deeply underwhelming, right? Being deeply, deeply underwhelming. Uh, uh, which it really is, right? I mean, it really totally is. Uh, like everything about this era is either shit or underwhelming or uh, a disaster, right? It just I, look, I mean, I'll wait, I'll wait to see what they what they're going to roll out on May 11th. I don't think it's going to be very good. And the bottom line, I get, I just on the strength of everything we've seen so far, the chances of being very good are are low. Now, don't be wrong. I kind of like Shooty and Millie. I thought they were good together. But like, I don't know. Look, Shooty is just so up his own fucking ass, which is. Uh, Funny because it seems to be everybody else is up his ass as well, and he quite likes that, from what I can tell. Like, it's, he's just so into being shooty Gatworth, right? And Doctor Who is a uh, um, a stepping stone on the uh, on on the path of shooty Gatworth, rather than you know uh, uh, being a, a definitive moment. Like for every actor, Doctor Who's been a definitive moment, even after they've gone on to have very long successful careers. I mean, um, well, William Hartnell, not really, he got to play. It was in a panto. <laughs> but Patrick Troughton worked non-stop for like, till he died, essentially, when he died in the mid-80s. Mid he worked a good sort of 20 years, a bit, bit of, once more in, twice more in Doctor Who. All right. Uh, um, John Pertwee, yeah. Wurzel Gummidge, a busy, busy actor. They had more iconic roles throughout his time. Tom Baker, 
Mm. Well, Tom Baker, there's nothing he could really do that will be as iconic as Doctor Who. Um, it was it was a real, real jarring, terrifying uh, experience seeing him in the lives and loves of a she devil uh, uh, with his hair cut short, having sex with was it Patricia Hodge? I can't remember. Which you know, I, I can as a vicar, right? Which I I can quite understand. Uh, Peter Davison, a great example. Very strong career throughout that many many different very high you know uh, uh, high profile roles. The, the the role of the Doctor defined his career, right? Even though he had a lot more going on as uh, Vess McCoy. Yeah, no, I think he got bigger jobs uh, and Colin Baker as well. I think mean, Vess McCoy clearly got bigger jobs because of Doctor Who after Doctor Who, like being in Lord of the Rings. I mean, uh, um, The Hobbit, right? Paul McGann. Doctor Who was hardly a blip on his resume. Uh, and uh, again, definitive for him. Even for Chris or Eccleston. Right, who is very, very much uh, into uh, removing himself from the role? Right, I, like, I'll do the money, big finish. It came up and offered me money. Uh, uh, I'm, a, I'm a socialist, me. Right, um, <laughs> tell me what happened. That's what he's like, literally what he said. Right, David Tennant, lots of success throughout his career. Doctor Who was the definitive role for him, that he was the doctor. Same with Matt Smith. I, I mean, you can say the same about but Capaldi, right? They both have strong careers. Matt Smith really has the kiss of death, though. Like, whenever he appears anywhere, uh, uh, you know, you know that movie's go going to fail. Sadly, right? Sadly. I, I, I wish that Terminator movie he was in, it was better, right? It was, oh, it was nearly there, but it, was, you know, it wasn't quite there. But Shooting Gatwa is in it for Shooting Gatwa, right? And I'm sick of him mugging the camera. I I really at this uh, there was so much goodwill. Do you remember all the goodwill there was a year ago? Burnt away to nothing. Essentially, with the announcement on, on Jinx Monsoon's casting. One second. When was that? Let me look it up. Doctor Who Jinx Monsoon casting announcement, and it just went worse and worse and worse after that, right? Uh, was it Dixon? I the Hollywood Reporter. This was April 3rd, basically a year ago, right? It was a year ago that Doctor Who started to go sideways, right? And after that, we had, did we have Doom Straight after that? Or was Doom Straight before that? Man, so many bad things in a row. I mean, like, and, and like, and we kept trying to be excited, kept trying to be excited. So, we got a new trailer dropping in about 52 minutes. We will watch that new trailer, right? We will watch that new trailer uh, uh, with interest. So I guess I'm watching with interest, and I will say somewhat disgust. I, I look. I think Joe Biden's a bad guy, right? I think he's a bad guy. I think, um, yeah. Look, I mean, I, look honestly, I see the culture war that divides a lot of the world, right? I think the the, the numbers are on our side at this point. But uh, uh, I see the cultural war that divides a lot of the world really being a light and darkness war, right? It, it's like, you know, you've got the other side which says sterilize your children, you know, uh, uh, if don't, have ch don't, uh, don't have families, don't get married, right? Have meaningless sex in any way that you want. Introduce children to sexuality. Um, it, it's socialism, everything is, 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 is socialism and extreme capitalism together. Right, it's like the and of course, of course, they're all on the side of Hamas, right? That's like that's the given, right? They're all on the side the the side of uh, um, Hamas. Well, it, well, on the you know on our side, I think we have people who want just normal traditional values, frankly, because normal traditional values tend to make more people happy. That and that's really boring. So that's why I can I pull this up. Let me see if I can find find, find the uh, the quotes for it because it's like I, I like. I found this really shocking. If you if you uh, uh, watch my um, Twitter feed, right? Uh, um... <laughs> this is really funny. One second, let me get let me grab this video. Oh man, there's there's a bunch of stuff. We got uh, oh, I got to grab this as well. Oh man, there's there's a lot of stuff. Oh oh, I got this as well. Fine. Okay, one second, let's start with this. Uh, uh, I very much agree with this. Right. So uh, what's that? Doink. Download. <laughs> if you just uh, save that video. 
So uh, uh, I was both disgusted and incensed that the um, Joe Biden de declared Easter Sunday the a trans day of visibility. I mean, another trans day of visibility. How many days of trans days of visibility can there be? Like, how much more visible? I mean, other than you're in our eyes permanently, and we all constantly uh, give you a round of applause, right? That seems like a uh, uh, that seems like what they're after, right? That seems genuinely like what they're after. But see, I'm trying to find the quote from uh, the White House when they decided to call this the trans day. This about and again. I really, genuinely am offended. I'm surprised how offended I am because you know I'm Jewish, right? I'm genuinely, genuinely Jewish. Uh, 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 and I'm genuinely, I meant to say, genuinely, genuinely offended, right? Uh, what's this? Oh, this is Libby Emmons, who I quite quite like her. Uh, <laughs> okay. So today's trans day of, of, of visibility. There, there are a few others, as, as I alluded to. Let me, let me pull, pull this up. So this is Libby Emmons from the Post Millennial. She's on Tim Paul a lot, right? Okay, uh, trans days. So again, you know, one of the few days in the Christian calendar, right? You've got what? Two major holidays, your Easter and Christmas. Fuck you! You don't get Easter anymore. Now it's for the trannies, right? Now it's for the trannies. You know what else is for the trannies? Let me show you. Oops. Doink. Uh, doink. Where is it? Oh, on the wrong thing, that's why. Uh, there you go. Has decided to make August Transgender History Month. This is the latest addition to an annual LGBTQIA calendar that includes National Black HIV AIDS Awareness Day, A Romantic Spectrum Awareness Week, HIV is Not a Crime Awareness Day, Bisexual Health Awareness Month, National LGBT Awareness Month, National LGBT Health Awareness Week. BT Health Awareness Week, National Women and Girls HIV AIDS Awareness Day, National Native HIV AIDS Awareness Day, International Transgender Day of Visibility. Inter and, and, and Christians have Christmas and Easter. International Asexuality Day, National Youth HIV AIDS Awareness Day, Day of Silence, National Transgender HIV Testing Day, Non-Binary Parents Day, Lesbian Visibility Day, International Family Equality Day, International Day Against Homophobia, Transphobia, and Biphobia, National Asian and Pacific Islander HIV AIDS Awareness Day, I mean, Harvey Milk Day. Pam it isn't literally everything that's not like a round of applause transphobia nowadays. Anything that's not like, yes! Oh, yes, great, it's trans, oh, fantastic, yes, more. Anything other than that is transphobia, right? It is genuinely, genuinely transphobia. It's, it, these people are nuts, right? These people are bonkers, McBonkers, it, uh, uh, if, you, if you don't mind me saying so. Try find the, uh, oh, here it is. Let me pull this up. Hang on, Dwight, let's keep carrying on with Libby. Sexual and Pan Romantic Awareness and Visibility Day, LGBTQ Pride Month, LGBT. What is Pan Romantic Visibility? Like, like, does that mean you don't like having sex, or you like having sex with everything? I, I don't know. Oh fuck, man! This gives me a headache. LGBTQ Families Day, Pulse Remembrance, Anniversary of the Supreme Court's Bostock decision, Anniversary of the Supreme Court's decision legalizing gay marriage, National HIV Testing Day, Stonewall Day, Queer Youth of Faith Day, Non-Binary Awareness Week, International Non-Binary People's Day. International Drag Day, Gay Uncles Day, Southern gay HIV Uncles AIDS Day. Awareness I mean, really? Day, History Month. Uh, this that, is the Lady AIDS and Once AIDS you get to Gay Uncles Day, right? I think you're being excessive, right? I think you're being excessive, if you don't mind, mind me saying so. Awareness Day, Bisexual Plus Awareness Week, Celebrate Bisexuality Day, National Gay Men's HIV AIDS Awareness Day, LGBTQ History Month, International Lesbian. She needs to make a calendar with, and, and rainbow out all the dates that are LBGT, right? And then you can see. Uh, uh, <laughs> What's left? Day. Coming out day. National Latinx HIV AIDS Awareness Day. Latinx, please. They hate being called Latinx. Day. National LGBT Center Awareness Day. International Pronouns Day. Glad Spirit Week. Asexual Awareness Week. Intersex Awareness Day. Transgender Parents Day. Transgender Awareness Week. I'll say this, though. These titles are better than the titles of the next uh, new season of Doctor Who episodes. Transgender Day of Remembrance. World AIDS Day. Pansexual, Panromantic Pride Day, and HIV Cure Research Day. I don't know, guys. I just don't know if that's enough awareness. No, not enough awareness. Not enough awareness. Then, uh, uh, so therefore, we had Joe Biden come along 
Uh, I, I mean, was this was this an intern, like an idiot intern, who didn't realize it was Easter? I mean, I didn't realize it, it was Easter, so I saw Dan Stream and they're talking about Easter egg. I'm like, really? Easter already? Okay. Uh, uh, now, therefore, I, Joseph R. Biden, Jr., uh, President of the United States, by virtue of the authority vested in me. You had no virtue of authority vested in you. You stole the election, too. Uh, by the Constitution and the laws of the United States, I do hereby proclaim by proclamation. Fuck Christians. That's my proclamation. I, I'm, I'm Joe Biden. I'm proclaiming fuck all peoples of faith. Uh, March 31st, 2020, a transgender day of visibility. I call upon Americans to join us in lifting the lives and voices of transgender people throughout our nation uh, to work towards eliminating violence, discriminated uh, based on... What violence? Like, specifically, what violence, mate? What violence? Here, let, let, I mean, there is some trans violence we, we, we should talk about. Um, you know, okay, you want, you want trans awareness day? Fine, well, we, we will be aware... Of, tra of, of transgender people, we have uh, uh, we have this thing. I think we we, we should be aware of uh, um, was it COS shooter identified non-binary. Well, you know, you know, they can't can't all be back, can they? Uh, 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 let's see. <laughs> oh, one second, we just found it. Uh, uh, and who else we got? We got Denver shooter identified as trans. Uh, Aberdeen shooter identified as trans. National shooter identified as trans. Philly shooter identified as cross-dress. Isn't that trans? Perry shooter identified as trans. Well, I'm kind of aware that they seem to be very violent, right? They seem to be very, very violent and kill people a lot. There's a lot of violence around trans people, but it's normally coming from them as, it, 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 as how it was seen. I don't know. Like, what is this violence against trans people? Because I'm not on board for that, but I'm not on board for this either. So then we got here. Let's see. Uh, this is the annual dates of significance in the LBGTQIA uh, plus uh, community. They got a zero discrimination day. Oh, you'll discriminate fine against Jews. Yeah, you'll find plenty of Hamas lovers in your zero discrimination day. Harmony week, except for anybody who doesn't agree with you. Harmony day. Transgender day of visibility. Well, you need them. You need them. You can't have enough of them. It's just, it's crazy, right? I, 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 I'm genuinely, genuinely offended, right? And it's funny because it's not my religion, right? It's not my religion, but I'm genuinely offended. I, I think this is disgusting. I really do, right? Was this a screw up or was it on purpose, right? I mean, look, the goal is to, you know, unequivocally replace religion, get rid of religion and replace it. So I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I do know that today's thumbnail uh, came courtesy of Joe Biden. <laughs> we had, where, where is it? Where's today's thumbnail? Uh, doink, right? Funnily enough, this thumbnail took fucking forever to do, right? I thought this would be a quickie. It took me about two hours, right? I thought I'll get this done, chick shot. No. Uh, I like Biden's posing pouch, however. That, that came out well. But I couldn't get... Good bunny girls for uh, Millie Gibson and, and uh, Nicola Bryant. I actually wanted to get a few more. Well, it was just like, it took me that long to get these two, right? They kept coming out like too pervy. Or I mean, even this one's a bit weird. You've got, she's got, uh, Nicola's got like somewhat genuine bunny ears, right? They're not like fur bunny ears. They're like real bunny ears. I declare Easter Sunday to now be a trans. I wish this was, this was a joke, but no. Like, I wish I could send this back to 2017 and go, look, look what happens for real, right? For real uh, with uh, uh, the future, right? It's just, it, it's beyond, I wish I could just take a, 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 an hour, two hour highlight reel of what's happened in since 2020 with the Joe Biden presidency, right? Every, all the things we've forgotten about. Afghanistan, remember the fall of Afghanistan? Do you remember that? A uh, uh, weird intern, uh, cross-dressing intern. Uh, they had like two days before the the, the disaster fall of Afghanistan, and, and then they uh, they released a TikTok video. Um, they had that you got, you should have like the economy just getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse, and, worse. Uh, and everything falling apart. And then you should show pictures of the uh, the trans visibility day they had what last year at the White House or the year before. And, Yes, all, uh, the, the open uh, uh, perversion, right? The public nudity or pride parades. Why are you proud of getting your junk out and waving it around? You know, 
Uh, who was it? Uh, Dre DeMatteo is doing... She's in her 50s, right? She looks really good and is doing OnlyFans. Now, Dre DeMatteo, you may remember, she was uh, Adrian... Uh, or Adriana from, from The Sopranos. She was the 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 girlfriend, uh, then wife or Chrissy, right? And she was eventually killed by Big Pussy, as I remember. Was it Big Pussy? I think it was Big Pussy killed him. Uh, uh, killed him, right? So she was uh, caught by the feds, and she was going to do time. She was going to get uh, get give give a lot of people. So they ended up killing her, right? And then she was in that spin-off series from Friends, the the Joey spin-off series. How long did that last? Two seasons. I think two seasons were, were, uh, was Jenna. You didn't, didn't re- really see her again. So now she's doing OnlyFans. And again, she's in her 50s. And she still looks pretty darn, darn solid. But, you know, and she's like, and and uh, Tim Paul mentioned it. Tim Paul says, you know, I didn't see the arc of feminism going in the way that uh, people would, uh, women would uh, quit their legitimate jobs as uh, doctors, as nurses, as uh, lawyers, as actors, uh, and become hookers, which you know essentially sex, that's what sex work is. It's it's sex for money, right? Selling sex for money, uh, and that's exactly what So she freaks out, Dre, Dre Mater, How dare you shame me for doing OnlyFans? How dare you shame me for doing pornography? There's things you should be ashamed of. I'm sorry. You should be ashamed of waving your junk in a four-year-old's face. You should be ashamed of that. The world's better if you're ashamed of that, right? You should be ashamed of uh, 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 very, very clear, transparent sexual innuendo to young children that you see in the family-friendly drag shows, right? Oh, it's not going to lick itself, right? You should, you should be ashamed of that. If you're a guy, you should be ashamed of uh, uh, leaving your family, right? Ditching your family and uh, having an affair marrying, and moving on to somebody else. All right, you should be ashamed of that, right? You should, uh, um, it's funny actually because my young, my younger son, right, who's uh, engaged. Where, when's he getting married? Who, who, who the hell knows? Like uh, religious engagements, they go quicker. They normally go for like two, three months, but yeah, the, the war's on, and they kind of the plan was when he got engaged, right? They'll be engaged for like a more normal secular time, like a year or so before getting married. They were young. But they wanted to make a genuine commitment to each other because they were, you know, uh, uh, he's in combat, he's in war, and she wanted to feel, you know, um, connected to him, right? Uh, uh, <laughs> and you, you got to understand, I, I don't know, I don't check what they do. I don't think they have sex, right? I don't think they, 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 they I don't, I, I'm pretty sure my older son uh, and his and his wife were uh, virgins a bit when when they got married. I think, and I look at their life now. And boy, it's so much better. You can see how much better. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Now I'm now I'm older. I really see like just in the same way. I think um, we get we're selling kids bullshit today. They're saying that gender is fluid, right? And I think that's bullshit. They were selling kids. Uh, I think in the same way we were sold bullshit that sex without marriage is something that'll make you happy, and it won't. It really it won't make women happy. It won't make men happy. It'll make you temporarily, you know. You know, you'll be happy during the event, maybe, right? But it doesn't give you permanent. It doesn't like give you real happiness. It's not a gateway to uh, ge- uh, genuine ha- happiness. So now I see my kids like living their lives not like I did, right? Much better. Uh, anyway, the point is this: <laughs> the point is this. My uh, uh, the, my son's my younger son's fiance. Uh, his parents are uh, her parents are divorced. And uh, she, it, it, uh, I, I don't know the details. I think and it seems to be pretty wide public knowledge that he uh, he left her. He he left the family and went off with another woman. Maybe he had an affair before. I don't know. But it's so weird now that we're we all have to get together and plan the marriage because he's super super religious now, right? Super duper religious. And, 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 and yeah, we're all sitting around the table going, "You cheated on your wife. You cunt. <laughs> Who are you trying to kid?" I mean, that, that, that's really what goes through my my, you know, my head. Uh, very strangely, very strangely. But yeah, you should be ashamed of doing that. There should be shame on you. There should be shame on you for uh, getting somebody pregnant out of marriage. There should be shame on men for doing that. Yes, I agree with that. No, it, yes. You know, this, this society we have of no shame whatsoever isn't going to make anyone happy, right? And it, boy, is this the society that... Uh, um, 
Rusty Davis wants and is subscribed to, right? It really is that society. Like, he wants a society with no shame, right? Um, which is strange. <laughs> Who was it? Somebody posted this thing. Uh, Seven months November, Joe Biden is helping America uh, see clearly uh, what this stands for. Thanks, Joe. Uh, also, Trump sold Bibles and stuff. So, yeah, so they posted this video, which I thought was... Uh, uh, um, yeah, I think this is pretty darn accurate, right? Children who had lost their faith. They were perverse and crooked and rebellious against God. They did eat the bread of wickedness and drank the wine of violence. I uh, think the bread of wickedness and wine of violence sounds pretty darn good, mate. Sounds pretty darn good to me. And they did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And the people cried, the graven image hath brought us joy. Well, again, yeah, this is basically what I'm saying. The dichotomy between um, having no shame and, and having shame. The uh, the golden calf was supposed to be, this is the golden calf celebration. The golden calf thing, by the way, was... Um, uh, caused by a mistake I make frequently, right? I make this mistake frequently. Uh, Moses was supposed to come down from Mount Sinai on a particular day, and he didn't come down. Uh, uh, and they said, oh, it's all over. Quickly make a golden calf so we can uh, uh, connect connect to God that way, right? And then they had an orgy. <laughs> so, you know, uh, um, maybe, maybe it was just an excuse. I don't know. And they worshipped the golden calf and sacrificed unto it. Yes, yeah, that is Joe Biden, mate. That is Joe Biden, uh, uh, disturbingly enough. <laughs> Weirdly enough, that's the weird world we live in, right? That is the weird world we live in. Let, let's get to the chat, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Constellation and Graces, Lonnie. We're on episode five, Wife Loves It. It's a really good show for a uh, uh, husband and wife if they, if your wife likes intellectual sci-fi. I was explaining, you know, some of it towards uh, uh, some of it in, in the last two or three episodes, uh, which, I won't, which I won't spoil for you. Uh, and she was like, oh, my God, that sounds awful <laughs> to, to my wife. She's not into it at all. By the way, the latest Ben Shapiro uh, from Jeremy uh, at the quartering is crazy. The latest on Ben Shapiro from Jeremy Quartering is crazy. Sounds like Ben fired Candice uh, the way Gina was fired for liking tweets in defense of her. So Candace Owens is an enigma to me, right? That's a real question. As a Jew, do I think Candace Owens is anti-Semitic? Um, I don't know. I really, I can't, I don't, I haven't seen enough stuff inside. I think she's being, certainly been pushed, pushed to be anti-Semitic by people like Ben Shapiro, quite frankly. Um, you know, I think it was, I think, I think, yeah, I think that's why. I think she could have gone either way. And I think she was pushed by Ben Shapiro um, in, because he was so insanely passionate about this, which I understandably so, right? Yeah. Um, to uh, to be anti-Semitic because there's okay there's a few factors. Firstly, the black community in America is re has reasonably higher levels of anti-Semitism than you know uh, uh, you know not in the hood, right? <laughs> that, that's true. So I think there's a there's a part there's a cultural uh, anti-Semitism going on. I think there is uh, I think it's metered by her Christian values. I think it's metered by her. Uh, desire for honesty, but I think it, we're saying in the other direction that she like doesn't back down for a fight from a fight, and Ben Shapiro uh, put her in a fight. So I don't know. I don't think she's anti-Semitic. I, I think if she is, she was made into that, and I think it was a, a terrible mistake. Right? That's why I think it was a terrible mistake. Fine. Uh, so Andrew says, "Yeah, yes, it's Easter. Do you want to see my body costume?" Oh, Icky Thump, it'll be so stunning and so brave. Oh, Icky, Icky Thump. Ethan Bookholder is here. I, please, everybody, pray for Ethan. I don't know what she needs, but I'm. I, you're in my prayers every day. Uh, 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 I hope you have uh, a great revelation this Easter, right? Oh, great stuff. We celebrated Passover and Resurrection Day by washing clothes and beating biscuits. I don't know what beating biscuits is. I could ask my, I could ask my wife. Maybe she knows. What, I mean, she, my wife makes a mean biscuit. Don't get me wrong. Uh, and then a nap. Great day. I don't know what beating biscuits is. Okay. It sounds be better than what we do celebrate uh, Passover. Uh, and look, uh, I have to tell you, I've always been a little bit pissed off that we get matzah, which is like cr uh, cracker bread, and you Christians get chocolate eggs. I mean, it seems to be you're the winner of that of that deal. It's like uh, Norm MacDonald has has a good... Uh, he had, had a good joke. He said the... Uh, abbreviation ID, you have uh, it breaks down like this I takes care of the letter I in identification and D takes care of the of the letters that spell identification 
So you've got I identification. Seems to me the D's doing all the heavy lifting. The I's got it easy, right? I's got it way easy. Matthew J is here, you doing Colin Archer. Happy Easter to all those celebrating. To all those not celebrating. I'm not celebrating, is it? Happy Easter to me. Happy Easter to everyone. Why not indeed? Uh, um the trailers are banned now. Uh, look at the old TV series, the amateurs uh, uh have that yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, uh, once I get through the chat, we'll we'll uh, start uh, we'll start looking at the episodes, uh, the episode titles, and then we'll go into the um, uh, the trailer. The trailer should be out in about uh, out in half an hour. They just got the last episode trailer out, uh, uh, episode title out. Let me just pull that up. I'll download that. Uh, <laughs> every time I look at these, I go. Phew. <laughs> I mean, at least this one sounds a bit more Doctor Who the last one, but fine. We 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 will get to all of them, ladies and gentlemen. We will get to all of them, uh, uh, and we will not be impressed. <laughs> and, and even if they are impressive, they've just again burnt away so much good goodwill. It's unbelievable. Like they burn away more goodwill than any of us have ever had in our lives, right? Gleefully, absolutely glee gleefully. Because they would eat their visibility. Uh, Amro is here. Happy Easter, not Passover, which is on the twenty second of April. So I, I, I am, uh, I am hoping, I am hoping we get an apocalypse light event about two weeks before. Wouldn't that be great? Oh God! I mean, I'm really bummed. It's uh, we're four days away from two episodes of Star Trek Discovery. I'm like, oh, oh, please, no. No, I was so praying for an apocalypse before Star Trek Discovery. Uh, but, you know, you know, they say that the land of Israel uh, uh, is earned through uh, pain and suffering, right? So maybe the Messian occasion is also earned through pain and suffering. And how much more pain and suffering can there be than watching and reviewing the, uh, uh, the glowing shit that is Star Trek Discovery? <laughs> two episodes are going to go through. Oh, fuck me. I hate it when they drop two episodes in the first week. Then you got to watch two of the pieces of shit together. Uh, I was at Eastern Visual last night, said Amaro. Uh, the congregation get, uh, get to play with uh, lighted candles. That sounds nice. Oh, yeah. Because the Jews were having a uh, Passover before getting nailed up. <laughs> you can sugarcoat that. Uh, Easter's the wrong date this year. Well, it, it's the different calendars. You've got the Jewish calendar. You've got the Gregorian calendar. You had you a couple of other calendars, and they all like uh, were amalgamated together, right? Uh, um, uh, what can you do? X Men five seven seven here. How are you doing? How are you doing? X Men five seven seven. Uh, 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 Ethan said she's she's missed a digression. I, there's so many directions. I, I don't know how many you missed. Uh, hello, everybody. Have I missed anything? Mr. digression. Oh, now I understand. So it's uh, uh, X Men five seven seven. Uh, where we're up to, Rabbi? Have you watched uh, Tusu TV? Uh, on Saturdays, he does a live stream from London protest. Uh, uh, uh fellow Persian reporter was knife this week. Blimey. Yeah, again, you know, it, it's the demarcation of evil. Uh, watch old TV, Alien Nation series. Oh, that was good. I like the movie as well. The James Khan. That's one of his last movies. So I think I found really, really tragic. There was a plan. A Godfather Part 3 was garbage, right? And and I see ways it could have been much better. But there was a plan for Godfather Part 4, which, which mirrored Godfather Part 2, which was about... Uh, you had uh, Al Pacino as the old retired Don, and it was who was it? The guy they introduced in three. Uh, one second, Godfather Part Three was who's it? Who was in it? Andy Garcia, right? They had Andy Garcia as and the new guy. So yeah, in Godfather Part Two, which is. Perhaps one of the best movies made. I think Godfather Part 1 is better. But Godfather Part 2, uh, you had uh, a dual storyline of the rise of uh, Vita Corleone, uh, played by Robert De Niro, uh, and mirroring the rise of uh, Michael Corleone, his, his son. Right, And you see the... the it, was, it's a, it was a story of um, kingship. Right of like of of rulership and kingship, and you saw the two diametrically opposed kings. You saw the uh, Marlon Brando, uh, Rob De Niro, one who who was why well, he was you know a, a thug, a gangster, you know, and he, he he could look after himself. 
he was there for the people, right? And I get it. It's like it's just between uh, Trump and Biden. He was there for the people. He said, "Look, you do this for me, I'll remember." Right? I'll remember. He had that line, and, and he did, right? And that's why he was so beloved, right? And in the first part, he was so beloved. And and uh, Mike, uh, Michael Corleone, played by Al Pacino, was it Al Pacino? Yeah, Al Pacino uh, was. Um, ruled instead of by love through absolute fear right through through complete fear uh and you see the how the how these two characters end their lives in it is a great juxtaposition because you have uh marlon brando playing with his grandson in in uh uh is his grandson brando playing with his grandkid in the where the garden like having fun and then kills over has a heart attack well and this is one of the good bits about about uh uh godfather part three right which was um that Michael Corleone is completely alone, completely separate, completely alone when he finally dies, right? So Godfather Part 4, uh, I heard Coppola talk about it. The idea was to have a dual story with the rise of James Caan, the rise of uh, Sonny Corleone, right? Uh, um, so it will be on flashback. Uh, at the same time as the rise of Andy Garcia while uh, Al Pacino is... Uh, aging and dying, right? So that actually sounds like quite a good idea. It's just, you know, what what really killed Godfather Part 3 is they couldn't get, um, what's it called again? Robert Duvall, right? Robert Duvall. The reason they couldn't get Robert Duvall is because they both, he wanted above the uh, above the title billing, right? He said, look, I'm a major star now, right? I mean, me and Al Pacino should get above the title billing, right? Uh, uh, and I kind of I kinda hear what he would do, but... I think when they wouldn't put out the money and, and uh, accommodate him, Coppola just lost his heart in this, right? Was not interested. Also, Coppola's second career as a director was nowhere near as strong as his first, right? Uh, uh, but yeah, yeah. How did we go to that? Alienation, right? Alienation. That was a great little movie. Uh, um, I like the TV show too, right? Um, might have did nothing. Somebody else did said, he said, you are absolutely right there. You are absolutely right. It's an insert that all uh, that of all possible days to bang on about transgender, they choose Easter. Uh, would they do it on Eid? Probably not. And like, you know, there's this cognitive dissonance that, you know, that uh, transgenderism and Christianity and ju judo Christian values are not completely at conflict. We, we can you know, have a, a live and let live uh, policy for, for both of us. Right. But we can't when, the, uh, uh, when, when you've got to start screaming, like if, if it was part of Christianity that on every day you had to have like Christian awareness days, uh, it, it, you know, I can understand the, the gay world getting somewhat uh, uh, rubbed up the wrong way by that, right? I can totally understand, but I'm enough already. We want to, we want to be accepted and treated as normal people. Look at us, yeah, normal people who are in charge of everything. <laughs> Romantic awareness week. I know. What does that mean? Uh, Cavs Gang Rascals is here. How you International Day of Narcissism, says Colin Archer. Boy, did you did, did you nail that? You're 100% right. You're 100% right. Uh, Cavs Gang, Happy Easter, says Cavs Gang Rascals. And to those who celebrate, I'm saying Happy Easter. I don't celebrate it. Happy Easter for all of you, mate. Absolutely. Uh, uh, like, you know, I like Thanksgiving too. Who doesn't like a turkey dinner? <laughs> who doesn't like chocolate eggs? For that matter, who doesn't like bunny rabbits? Bunny rabbits are gorgeous. Uh, um, uh, pansexual, like a friend of mine, is somebody who's attracted to a person based on their personality, not sex. Yeah, look, I, I believe that, that, that. Okay. But that's not normal, mate, right? That's not normal. In fact, I think that's somebody with a... Um, some form of mental illness, right? Uh, and they're using that to as a cover for that right and i'm not look live and let live i don't saying i'm right i'm not saying you know that they're wrong i'm saying that's my 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 opinion i don't think they're going to be happy right i don't think people are going to i look there are teeny tiny segments of the of the of the population who are pansexual probably not you know this 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 mass approach that we got uh where are we up to where are we up to fine uh, but what was telling us they are Latinx, so that they must do as they're told. That's the truth. What where did Latinx come from? White people, and they want to name something so they can own it. It's really that that's the uh, um, uh, that's the way to go. Uh, but well, why did you choose Easter? Why did you forgot it was Easter? I think he forgot it was Easter. Oh, he did, whatever the intern who did it, right? 
When is travel session day? That's every day and show trial uh, 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 is every year, uh, all the year too. I know. Look, all I can say is if it was, uh, uh, um, I, I, I think it's going to be impossible to even cheat and win an election at this point. Their only hope the Democrats, I think, is to start a global war and suspend uh, suspend elections. I think that's really their only hope, right? I really think that, that that's their only hope. And I think it's what they'd be quite happy doing. Uh, Sutherland says, it, if I seem to be quiet, it's because I'm having an Easter egg. Well, you enjoy, mate. You enjoy. Uh, uh, Shooty is fabulous and gay. Tri- uh, quadruple X time period. Yeah, God, I know. Oh, I can't stand it. Anyway, fine. So uh, we've got 20 minutes to the new uh, uh, the new 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 uh, trailer comes out. God help us. Uh, let's have a look at the, uh, the the slow, boring, overproduced, and too expensive rollout for the titles of the t- of the the episodes for season one, season 14. So the uh, uh, the first episode we're seeing on May the 11th, right? First of two episodes is this one. Space Babies. It's a bit simplistic and juvenile. I mean, I it, it's okay sometimes to do something a bit different, right? Uh, um, but this strikes me as Doctor Who for the TikTok generation, right? They want they they really want it to appeal to TikTokers. It's not going to happen. It's like you more unless there are Doctor Who fans on TikTok. It's not going to happen. Right, it it really isn't going to happen. So this this episode is going to be lost and forgotten, which I think is sad, quite frankly. Right, but you know all all of, you know what this is like. It's like when your uh, your dad or your uncle starts dr- dressing too young and and trying to be hip and down with the youth. Right, uh, uh, that's exactly what this is, because Russell Davis is just trying so hard to be young. I think he's trying so hard to be young because. I don't think he's got what to grow old for, right? You know, he doesn't have children, obviously. He doesn't have... Uh, um, you know, this is a drawback of being single when you're in your, in your 60s, right? He's desperately trying to claw at being young again. Uh, so Space Babies, it's just, it's dumb. It sounds dumb, right? That's my problem with it. It sounds dumb. So oh, just a bunch, bunch of water. I mean, I, I mean, maybe it'll be good. Maybe it won't. If I may quote uh, uh, Mega Geek, good luck, everybody. <laughs> that, that is that is our new uh, uh, catchphrase. Good luck, everybody. Is, was that was that the thing? Let me just now. I got to look it up. Um, <laughs> it's on my timeline. Well, good luck, everybody. There you go. <laughs> good luck. I'm going to be using that a lot more. Right. Good luck, everybody. Uh, I know how I feel. Fine. So that's episode one. Uh, uh, also that night, we have episode two, uh, uh, which is the only one people are going to talk about or, or remember, uh, which is this one. This is one where a year ago we lost all hope. <laughs> right? This is, where, this is where Doctor Who fell apart. The Devil's Called. So at least this one has a definite article in it. The. Right? Um, fine. Now we see creepy music, right? Uh, here we saw that with the uh, in the trailer with shooting cut. Where, where, where's that trailer? Uh, are we going to see the give me the love in? Come give me the love in. Fuck off. Uh, oh, the rabbi streaming. I know you're excited, Billy. I know you're excited, darling. Uh, where was it? Let's, let's see if we can find find the uh, the blink and you miss it. Uh, Jinx monsoon again, which looks so shit. Like, what looks so genuine? She looks like a Muppet villain. Is this it? And uh, no. I hate the um, I mean. It, that was a bit of it. One second. You see, like, the magic music notes flying around. Uh, uh, frankly, I'm just looking at Millie Gibson, but, you know. Where was it? Was it before this? I mean, on it, it's completely forgettable trailer, and I can't remember anything from it. I think this might, might be might be the reason. Uh, okay, Millie Gibson as a Lizard Woman. Still very hot, right? Still very, very hot. 
Yeah, I mean, let's just play it. With all my adventures, never seen anything like this before. Oh my, Bridgerton! Yeah, everything she's in is much better, right? Everything is much better for. This place is completely. There you go. Where is it, doing? Yeah, look, I'm sorry. Not doing it for me, baby. Not doing it for me. Uh, no, okay. No, at least that one's got a title that sounds like a Doctor Who episode, right? I, I mean, at least. Oh, dang, wrong thing. So that's episode two. Then, uh, so on the 18th of May, we're going to get this. So this is written by Stephen Moffat. Let me go look at the notifications in a second. Uh, well, okay, one second. Devil, uh, Space Babies written by Russell David, director Julianne Robinson, don't care. Uh, ben Chisel directing Devil's Chord, Russell Davis wrote it. Stephen Moffat wrote Boom with Julianne uh, Ann Robinson. So I'm going to say that this, <laughs> yeah. Where was it? She looks very good there, Billy. Uh, uh, I love this, right? This is so cool. And I, I, I say this every day now. I think she was like, <laughs> yeah, that was from, I reckon, bet that's from uh, Boom. Because let's play the game. Yeah, it's the same laser fire. So, yeah, I think it's that. So that's boom. Maybe that'll be good. Like, why do they just keep denying he was writing one as well? I, I, it was, it's just silly, isn't it? It is just silly. So what's this one? <laughs> By the way, 73 yards. Where's the Doctor Who logo? Why does it just say Doctor Who on the corner? It, isn't that weird? I think that's weird, right? I think that I think that that's very strange, right? I really do. Um, one second, that's funny. So that's uh, episode. What was it? We're up to four now, I think. Seventy-three yards. <sighs> Again, I, I'm I'm not liking the brevity of these titles. Again, it seems like Doctor Who for the TikTok generation. So who's writing and directing seventy-three yards? It is. Russell Davis is writing it. Dylan Holmes Williams is directing it, right? Okay. Fine. So then, okay, that kind of looks like a spooky, you know, uh, the demons type episode. Maybe it'll be, yeah, maybe it'll be good. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not holding my breath. Uh, I keep pressing the wrong button to upload uh, a uh, video. That was. Uh, 73 yards, and then we have also by Russell e. Davis, directed by the other bloke, where his name is. Yeah, I'm bored of the uh, breaking up technology thing. You did that to death during the 60th, and it told us nothing, by the way. Right? All your binary bullshit was for, what, what, for uh, Yasmin fucking Finney. Dot and bubble. Again, I, I'm just somewhat bored of these flippant, silly, one-syllable titles, right? Yeah. Is everything one syllable? Let me, Space Babies, yeah, one syllable. Devil's called Devils, and that's two syllables, right? Boom, 73, 73, is that one? Uh, five, 73, yards, dot and bubble, fine. So that's that was episode five. So that'll be, so we have the 11th, 18th, uh, 25th, so I guess this is June 1st or 2nd, something like that. Okay, and then I guess it'll be June 9th. Then. I did the same thing again, man. Ah, uh, disgrazia. <laughs> so, is this the reading? This looks like the Regency episode to me, right? And it says the 8th of May. 1813. So this one is written by the Loki gang. Kate Heron and Bryony Redman were directed by Ben Chesel, right? Uh, and then we have... 
So that was episode six. Mercy of the season is coming to an end. Thank God. Oh. And episode seven is The Legend of Ruby's Monday. So this sounds like it's going to be some kind of like episode where you get into who Ruby Sunday is, the mystery of it. I don't think you're going to do that with this one. I think this is going to, I think this is a standalone one that's going to wrong foot you, right? Um, and also, again, how invested can we get into a character that you fired because you're schmucks? Like, I can't believe uh, uh, that you. Uh, uh, you fired Millie Gibson. Con says, for a show that started uh, with historical episodes as education, referencing to Bridgerton does not bode well. I hear what you're saying, but for a character like of Millie's age, they all know Bridgerton, right? I think that that, I, that seems that seems like old Rusty Davis, who knew what he was doing here. Let's have a look at it. You're turning more and have the whole universe at my fingertips. And I'm all on my own. I'd love it. If you came with me. Yeah, that's just a really weak speech. I'm sorry. Who are you? I'm the doctor. Yeah, this has to be a sequel to... This looks like a sequel to the Weeping Angels. Uh, not the Weeping Angels, the, the Clockwork Droids, right? Which looks like it's going to be uh, the Regency one, which is written by the... Um, uh, the Loki girls, right? The Loki girls who write shit. So my guess is this. That one, I thought that one, they're going to bring back the clockwork droids. And that was the one where, uh, 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 I thought that was the one that was going to have, uh, uh, Stephen, Mo Stephen, Mo I kept having Chris Christian going from it, Stephen Moffat writing, right? Now I think it's more likely it's the Loki girls are doing the sequels there because I think they probably saw that growing up. Uh, and they liked it a lot, and they were eager to revisit it, right? It was, was kind of like, you know, somebody of my age wanting to revisit the... Um, uh, revisit the, uh, uh, I don't know, Pyramids of Mars or Happiness Patrol. They, they, I enjoyed when I was young. That's what it looks like to me. Uh, we got uh, Vizcaf Nightstar is here. Uh, why is Millie so wonderful again? She's a good actress. I, I Look, what, it's not just that she's hot. And she is hot. She is very hot. But it's not just that. It's it's the same with Austin Butler. I was talking about this yesterday. Austin Butler was in Dune. He was in Master of the Air. He was in an Elvis movie, which I didn't see. But in Master of the Air, and on Dune for that matter, your eye wouldn't leave him, right? He just had this screen magnetism that you couldn't like. Sh it, he, like he was the, the thing in the screen you looked at, right? And uh, I think Millie has the same thing going on, right? But yeah, this I reckon is the sequel to the TikTok droids episode. Uh, and look, they got a bit of a David Tennant reference. Yeah, they, they, oh, how old are they? Let's see. Let's see how old they are. What's it? This, this is written by Kate Heron. Uh, let's do Briny Redmond. Briny Redmond. How old is she? Uh, Briny Redmond looks like she is. Uh, where is she? Uh, is there a? Uh, how old is she? Co-writer. Briny written. No, it doesn't say there. IMDb. I and mean, she doesn't look like she looks like she's in her. Yeah, what's that? I'll pull out this picture. Looks like she's in her early to mid thirties to me, right? Which would mean, what year was Girl in the Fireplace? Here, this is a picture of her. What year was Girl in the Fireplace? That will, will be 2006, right? So that is 14 years ago. So yeah, she was, a, she was an, I bet she was a mid to late teenager when Girl in the Fireplace came out. And I think it was like, oh, the magic. Yeah, that's who she is, right? So I reckon that's, that's briny. Redmond, and it's also written by Kate Heron, who, uh... <laughs> again, again, if your claim to fame is you wrote for Loki, uh, you want may want to keep that for yourself. Yeah, they're the same age. 
They're totally the same age. They totally watched David Tennant, right, uh, in Girl on the Fireplace. It was so romantic. They felt their girly bits go all gooey. They felt their girly bits go gooey. And now they wanted to re retread that. They want to retread their gooey girly bits, right? It's called the TARDIS. It's a time and space machine. Is it safe? No idea. I fucking hate this, right? Again, this is TikTok Doctor Who. What if I change history by stepping on a butterfly? Well, that's not going to happen, is it? Oh. Why would you say that? Well, that's not going to Like, why would you say that? Oh, what's wrong? Oh. With all my adventures, never seen anything like this before. Oh, my Bridgerton. <laughs> this place is completely... Okay, so when she said, oh, my Bridgerton, right? Now, are there... Is, is this a... Uh, so, yeah, this is a... Uh, what's the word? Uh, uh, um, a blind cast? Not blind cast. It was a... It was a Colorblind casting, which, you know, look, if we weren't living in the age of woke, I wouldn't be so opposed to it, right? Because for me, I think that entertainment always has to uh, uh, reflect the mores of the society it's entertaining, right? And, and, and like now we're in a situation where we have significantly higher black populations. Like these, when in the sixties it was what one two percent of the population. Now it's like 10, 15 percent, right? I'm not. I know it's historically inaccurate, but like, look, we've all seen, you know, a, a blonde Jesus, like white blonde Jesus, in 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 pretty much all our uh, I, uh, iconography, right? And he, Jesus, if he if he existed, uh, uh, and I don't want to, uh, 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 you know, pass that point at all. But if he if he, you know. Well, it's almost certainly not white and blonde, right? But it's like we just all accept because it's a reflection of of our society, what a white blonde person is in the society in, like, you know, the 1800s, the 1970s, gives you a um, an emotional impression, right? Which, uh, uh, which uh, from our society, which is why I think we're... So if it wasn't all, all the woke shit, I wouldn't be opposed to this, right? Uh, unfortunately, there is a lot of woke shit, so there you go. This place is completely okay. That she this looks so awful, right? Oh, we got Jinx Monsoon. Oh, how fabulous! Completely... <laughs> Things seem to be turning more and more supernatural. Is that monster? No, don't be silly. There's no such thing as monsters. So, this is probably from the first episode. Just creatures you haven't met yet. Oh, I, I just wish he wasn't so gay, like, no, so, so, like, noticeably gay. There are powers beyond the universe, so vast. The whole world could slide into the pit. This is what we're trying to stop. Who's that? This one? I mean, again, if it wasn't for Jinx Monsoon, I was going to say, that looks like a good episode, but it's pretty good. I, know. I don't think I'm going to be sold by Jinx Monsoon the same way I'm not particularly sold by. Uh, um, uh, so, I need to know she'll be okay. You'll keep her safe. I will keep us safe. I wouldn't trust him for a bloody second. I promise. It's taken me all this time to, to change it. To realize what I'm here to do. I'm going to save the world. To, 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 to change it. Everything is possible. Everything. Yeah, this, that, this, this, that frame here is what I really hate. Oh, God, I really hate it. Uh, oh, I just... He doesn't really feel like Doctor Who to me. Now, again, I'm going to go with an open mind, but, man, they've done everything they can. It's possible. Yeah, everything is possible. This might not be shit. Change me. But I can't trace time. I don't get me wrong. I like a bit, I like a bit of David Bowie. Fine. So that, yeah. And now I did, we didn't look at the last, uh, uh, the last episode of the season, which is, and again, this one has a bit of a Doctor Who name, so I'm, I'm quite happy about that. Empire of Death. Okay, I like it's got of in the middle, right? <laughs> I know it's stupid, but I like that it's got of in the middle. I think that that's somewhat important to me. Or well, is the new trailer out? Let's have a look for a second. Have a look. Doink. Oh, they got a nice, nice new, new, new header. Is this new? This header. Let me check a second. 
Let me just grab that. She cried. <laughs> yeah, I, I say that joke often, and it always, always makes me laugh, right? It always, always makes me laugh. Uh, uh, and yeah, what, what, what more reason is there for uh, uh, the joke than that? Fine, it's gone eight o'clock. Let's see if they dropped it yet. No, not yet, not yet. We wait in anticipation with break, bated breath, right? Wait in anticipation with bated breath. Uh, uh, but, but, you know, while we're waiting, it's better to have somebody to wait with, right? If you're at a bus stop on your own, you don't want that. You, you, you don't want to be hanging out on your own, right? Right. You want to have someone uh, uh, who can help burden the vicidrefuse uh, vis, <laughs> of life, right? Who can hit, weather the slings and arrows of outrageous thoughts. So fortunately, we have somebody here uh, 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 who might know somebody like that. Uh, it is, of course, Birmingham's <laughs> King of the Geeks, Dan Hadley. How you doing, sir? <laughs> Uh, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you, mate. Yeah, I, I haven't been at any bus stops today, but I've ran past a few this morning I, doing I, my, I, I, my I daily. Do. I don't care what the police say. <laughs> yes, this is it. Unless the arresting officer uh, shows the correct credentials, I just go about my business. Well, and, exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah, well, I, they, don't, they don't do that. So, well, I you know, is, is, oh, is, is the new trailer out? I, yeah, fine, we, I just saw the new trailer. Let me, uh, yeah, let me see if I can get it from YouTube instead. Because that way it'll be... Uh, um, why scream? One second. Well, so, what do you reckon? The, 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 what's the deal with them uh, uh, dropping the, this new trailer now? What's the What's the deal with uh, with somebody? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've seen a few people, um, particularly those um, again, not having a go to anybody in particular. Calling it as I see it, the culture wars got very silly on both sides. I've I see a lot of people scratching their heads, going, "Hmm, another trailer so quickly. Why are they doing this?" It's mostly people overseas. It's a public holiday in Britain. <laughs> they always do this. Everybody's off work for four days. Of course, they're going to drop a trailer. Of course, no, they're going to drop some that. sort of release. I, I I I thought. I might, look, my feeling is, I think the uh, um, the reception on the first trailer, much like everything else they've done so far, has not been as good as they hoped. I think it's. Uh... In all honesty, I'm not sure that that's true. I I'm not sure that that's true at all. The figures. Oh, you like the crowd? I forgot. I I, I watched the um, show. Well, it, it isn't. Um, it isn't really whether I back whether I liked it or not. I mean, I've seen the figures on those on the views on the uh, Disney Plus channel and the BBC channel, and they are they are uh, astronomical. Uh, I know. No, that... the, I think, no, you would you would expect them to be good, right? You would expect them, to be, but there's been uh, well, I think you got ratioed, didn't it? That trailer. The first not, one. not according to the screenshots that I, I had on screen the other day, unless something's changed in the last few days. No, this, this things, is uh, because the, things do the, change. I, I, as I, I, sorry, because things do change, as I've I've had to acknowledge to about five people already in the last hour. Because yeah, all the working titles that I went to air with the other day, most of them have changed. But <laughs> oh, I hate the titles. By the way, uh, uh, the titles are Space Babies. Now yeah. I was. If you remember, we had the Call of the Universe down as episode one. So much better. So um, much better. Okay. <laughs> I, I, hand, on, uh, hand on my heart, I was told around a week and a half ago that episode one was now called Space Babies, but it sounded so unlikely. And it was from and it was from a, a, a source, um, but I only tend to broadcast if I hear it from two or three different people that I right, know right. trust. I... And so I thought, that's I'm going to come unstuck with that one. So... <laughs> So you know, space, it just, again, this is Doctor Who for a TikTok generation. It just seems like it's dumbing itself down. I'm hoping I'm wrong, right? I'm hoping it just seems like it's really dumbed down, and, and that's why I did like the. See, I thought the sixth anniversary trailer, which turned out to be something yeah. I thought was shit, was a much stronger trailer, right? Because I thought it told you a story and intrigued you, but it, this was just a bunch of cute, flashy bits that didn't pull together. So let's watch a new trailer, right? Maybe Please, maybe yes, I haven't seen it, so yes, who knew it? I, it, it dropped 55 seconds ago. Right? Oh, so oh, this is interesting. Okay. Let's uh, let's pull that. New official uh, Doctor Who Season 1 trailer. Reveal yourself. Ready for this? Okay, firstly, fuck off! Go. I'm <laughs> fucking sick of this! Leave me stop, alone! Stop grinning at me! Stop smiling at yes, me, you go yes, mad! You, I, you look like you should be in a van talking to children to ask to come and see your puppies, right? This is not, This is not good. Give me the loving! Now, stay back! We are going to walk through time. Oh, this is so Bridgerton. This is Ruby. You are wild, brave, and rude. Nothing. No, you made it worse. 
Where shall we go? Okay, this is a way better trailer than the first one. This 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 trailer has a narrative and it has character, which make again, but it's focusing on Millie Gibson. Millie Gibson sells everything. It's incredible. Yeah, let's go back. Sorry, what did you say? I think it's almost exactly the same as the other one. <laughs> no, it's very similar. It's very similar. Yeah. But the uh, you're right. They are starting. They are starting with. They are starting more with her. But no, this there seems to be a bit more of a narrative with this. No, you made it worse. Where shall we go? Anywhere. It's you. Space baby. Oh, is it the universe, man? Let's have a random landing. Is it safe? Listen to me. This is what we're trying to stop. All of life extinguished. You'll keep us safe? I will keep us safe. Okay, so I don't know if it's me with my negative connotation that I built up with shooting, right? But whenever I, it, it focuses on him, I, 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 it, I lose interest. I feel my emotion dropping, right? When it's on her, I feel engaged. We've got work to do. <laughs> There's a storm coming in. You called. Honey, I'm a much bigger bang than you bargained for. I will shatter this silly little battlefield into dust. In a heartbeat. Into dust. I don't have a people, I don't have a home. But I have freedom. Catching monsters, getting into scrapes. So I keep moving on. To see the next thing. And the next, and the next. Have you ever felt so alive? And that's just the beginning. Ooh! For me, Shuchi is killing this now. Oh, oh, and not the good way. It's just, uh, yeah, you can um, I think it's mostly it's it's another clips package. Uh, some of the same clips, some are slightly different. I think this does the first one was all about the doctor pretty much. This one is it more evenly balanced between time with on the doctor and time on her, which I think does help this one a lot, like you said. Um, shooty, we see we see much more swagger in this. But, but yes, I know. Perhaps, perhaps not enough, not enough range in this. To again, we're not seeing enough to re, to to sell us hundred percent on him. Yeah, um, you, you, you really you nailed it. Swagger, but no range. That's a hundred percent what this is. Yeah, the swagger. The swagger is a relief. Um, it is. Uh, he, he's thirty one, coming thirty two. I think he's thirty two in a few months' time, a couple of months. Right. Uh, but he looks he looks considerably younger, and so uh, it's it's similar to when Matt Smith took the role. But Matt Smith had so much range and so much uh, swagger that it eclipsed that kind of is this guy really the Doctor kind of thing? He looks and, like and a baby. Also, but... Matt Smith didn't play it like he was the coolest thing in the world. No, Shooty Gap no. was that like, he was oblivious to his own corners, which made him a lot cooler, right? Which made, which I really, the whole idea of uh, the, wearing a bow tie, you know, like they are that they're not cool, but you wear it because you don't care, makes it cool, right? I think that that was somewhat brilliant. But um, this is conventional heroism, which I, I think uh, has its place in Doctor Who. It has its moment, but uh, they're hanging their hat on conventional heroism. It seems to me, from particularly from this, which uh, may work for some people, but for classic Doctor Who fans, and you know what? For I think for a lot of new series Doctor Who fans as well, for pe- for people who've been on the brand for a little while, they're going to take a they're going to take a little bit more than this. Sadly, uh, Mister Smiles, Doctor Nutty, as uh, one of our friends has taken to calling him, which I approve of. <laughs> Good luck, everybody. I, I'm definitely coming by. Uh... <laughs> So the, the, yeah. the, the, the thing about space babies is it feels they don't have confidence in it because they're dropping it on the same night with uh, Devil's Cord, so mm. it's going to be forgotten completely, right? Which is it, it's the yep. establishing story for these people, right? It's, and, and, it's the, already the uh, it's of Disney is, already is the overlooked the fact that all the post right work is episode two. Yeah, uh, it's the Eurovision thing. So, there will be people out there 
particularly content creators, who will even skip episode one and watch episode two first so they can see the Jinx Monsoon material first and get more outraged first. That's ah, uh, it, it, I thought you were talking about the other side of the cold roll. Uh, uh, yeah, you're probably right. Uh, no, yeah, but uh, bo- right. Uh, on, on both sides. But I think people are going to go for the, for the Jinx Monsoon episode first. And uh, I mean, certainly by the time I wake up on Saturday morning, I expect if I put my smartphone on and boot up YouTube, I will just see a stream of thumbnails, all with uh, 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 freeze frames of Jinx Monsoon pulling some face or another. And she was awful. This is bad in big letters. Uh, All that kind of thing. Just. (laughs) I, I, I don't think she's awful for this production. No, it's right, fine for what it, it's fine for what it is. Just not my cup of tea at all. I can't stand I, I, that kind of stuff. I think it's 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 this is something that won't grab an audience, right? Because no. they, they're going for a different audience. They're going for the TikTok generation, right? And, and that never works. Well, whenever you try and get another audience, it never ever be who you are, and that's how you get. Look, I mean, Star Trek must have learned that lesson. Like, like they stop being who they are, and, and they nobody nobody cares about anything they've done that. And mm. Paramount are like, uh, uh, like Paramount going down. Paramount have had their, yeah, where, where is that thing? Paramount have had their debt downgraded to be like a junk bond here. One second, let me pull this up. Uh, share screen is doink. In the mishandling of a brand like Star Trek is unforgivable, isn't it? Get Paramount's global debt. Well, it's unforgivable, but everybody does it. Paramount's global yeah. debt rating downgraded to junk by S and P. That's bad. Okay, that's that. That's saying that this is a, a debt they won't be able to recover. This is a junk. Bond. Right, and this is Paramount. Right, this is why they're desperate to trying to trying to offload uh, Star Trek. All right, and they and you have Rusty Davis saying, look, the BBC is going down. I, I look, they, there's a big investor um, vote in. Uh, in Disney, I think in about two weeks' time, something yeah. like that. Uh, and the the current board are getting the shit kicked out of them by the anti woke uh, Nelson Peltz uh, uh, group. They they are having okay. the absolute. But, but here's the thing: Rusty Davis was recently saying, "I have a contract that's basically monthly. I can walk whenever I want." And I think mm. when they pull the rug on all the trans shit and the wokeness, which they're going to instantly, right? They, the 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 uh, Malfeasance of the running of Disney, right? They they just got they just got hit by a lawsuit, uh, with like a fifty page page lawsuit for uh, discrimination because they their co- uh, corporation they didn't uh, uh, abide to the anti discrimination laws with their with their hiring practices, right? They're gonna get their ass handed to them, right? This is like another disaster after another disaster, another disaster. I I don't see. Bob Iger surviving, right? And if he goes, they're de wokeifying is Disney very quickly, right? And, and uh, I think there's going to be a lot of firings. And you know, I, I, I think it, this era of Doctor Who, I'm going to be surprised if it, if it goes to a third season, right? Uh, uh, maybe, maybe they again, uh, Bad Wolf have Bad Wolf have a five year deal with Doctor Who. Bad Wolf do. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, not, I'm not saying somebody else will do it. I don't see it going beyond two seasons. Uh, because it, I, I just don't think they're going to get a, uh, an, a, uh, an audience, right? I, I really don't, right? I really genuinely don't. Yeah, let's look again. See, as I see it, they are certainly Bad Wolf and Sony. I, I can't speak for the, for the Disney stuff, um, but certainly Bad Wolf and all most people, particularly on our side, side of the aisle, are only talking about Disney. And I understand why. But I'm de- I'm determined to remain anchored here. This was happening without Disney in the first place. This would have always happened. I mean, I maybe, I mean not said, but the, this production the, would be happening without Disney. Uh, but the, the idea that, that I'm sorry to interrupt, but the idea that Disney and BBC are in any way uh, uh, there's any daylight between them ideologically. Oh no, they they are yeah they are the same people. I mean, I've all, I've always said that the very last two people to give up on wokeness will be Disney and the BBC, simply for the fact that Disney have got more money than, every, than everybody else, and the BBC have got more of other people's money in Britain than and in, probably in Europe than any other broadcaster. It's not their money to to waste, and and Disney is is uh, had 
so much that it was largely in effect the same for them. I, I believe that they that this version of the show, certainly with Shuti Gatwa starring it, will reach its natural conclusion as they want it to, what they will have already agreed. But as to whether, uh, as to how much it's uh, promoted, I think we've already seen how Disney, they didn't promote the church on Ruby Road at all. They're promo- they are promoting the balls off this, uh, just as I was told, told they would by people I know in the States who are a little bit more uh, all over this than I am. They said, oh, you just wait until... Just wait until May. Wait until well, wait until April. I suppose is it right. April yet? Nearly. Wait until April. Um, uh, and I, yeah, okay, fair enough. Um, so we are here, and they are doing it. But I think so. It could give the impression that they're in. Lo- they are in love with this new signing, but it's all transparent. They are in love with it. It's all very they, transient. Uh, uh, look again. The idea that, that they love it is very clear. I think I'm getting the same vibe from this production that I got from the Chris Chibnall production when things did, when things started to go south, which was when it first started airing. Like I got this, like, I feel them sweating. I feel Rusty Davis being very nervous. Things are not going the way he thinks they should. No, that they are absolutely not going the way that they intended. I, I, I do believe that that trailer went down pretty well, though, uh, generally speaking. I saw a lot. I, I saw, uh, actually, I did see more uh, excitement for it than not. It was divided. It was divisive. But Doctor Who, Doctor Who always is. It, it has been, it has been for no, a long time. Uh, okay. I think, I think no, I who? Say in the, no, if you remember when it came, when it came back, the general public were, were captivated and right curious immediately. Yeah. But within the fandom, I'm, I'm talking more within the fandom. Oh, okay. No, honestly, I, the, and from my my recollection, I, I I think people were somewhat nervous in two thousand five, right, about what what if this could work. But I think by the time you had the Unquiet Dead air, the, the fandom was totally on board at that point, right? A Victorian era episode, uh, uh, Edward, yeah, that that really brought everybody board. They I think, think people you're right. I think there was a sense of. And we can relax when the Unquiet yes. Dead was on yes. because this, this right. is recognisably Doctor Who now. Whereas, even though the end of the world probably wasn't, you know, as much as I loved it, probably wasn't. No, the but the general... but thing was right, right. They did uh, Rose, which was very mm. contemporary, right? Very, very bold, very, very contemporary. And then they went very traditional. And then was the what was the third one? Uh, end of the world uh, over there. Uh, Aliens Land World War Three. Yeah, no, that in. In Britain, that was the one that this two-part story, which the fandom uh, kind of kind of claimed to hate at the time because of the farting aliens, and still dismisses now. In Britain, that two-parter is what absolutely wowed the British public. They yeah. loved it from yeah, that I week. Agree. Everybody was talking about it from that two-parter, and I know that still most of the fandom do not like it. They consider it to be CBBC nonsense, but that was. That was the two-parter. That was the seller. It's, um, you know, but yeah, I think it was the shock of seeing something very, very British with great yes. production values, which you saw right yeah. And it was so unashamedly British. You had like Rose and the Doctor holding hands. They run across London yeah. Bridge or Tower Bridge. You know, not Tower, it was London Bridge, right? Uh, to Southern London. It was so bleedingly British and patriotic, right? I think that really helped. A friend of mine who had been willing Doctor Who to failure from the day that it was announced it was coming back to the day it debuted. Uh, When when, uh, those episodes were were dropping, particularly the first first two or three, uh, this guy said to me, he's a standard bloke in a pub, you know, he's he's a really standard guy. And uh, he'd been taking the piss solidly for two years, it's going to be crap, nobody's going to watch this in in 2005, blah, blah, blah. When those episodes were on, it, and the the enthusiasm was start, was building around it during Aliens of London, it's, I don't understand why is everybody into this. It's nothing we haven't seen before. So that, it, 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 no, it, we haven't seen anything like that before. The, the difference was, in many respects, we had, but the main difference was exactly what you've just said. We never seen a British show do that before. Ah, yeah. Major. That was the thing with the general public being so unashamedly British and, and and having so much swagger being so ridiculous at the time at the same time as being so absolutely confident in the material that you're putting out to the point where if you didn't join the party you felt like the outlier you felt that you were the one with the problem that was the genius of aliens of London and and uh, World War three wasn't it the second one yeah yeah but I get but but th- this time they have they have the confidence but I don't, do they really 
Or are it they, feels, uh, it um, feels more corporate and it feels more transatlantic, which which immediately more. drains it of of, of personality, uh, makes it seem like everything else, which is the last thing Doctor Who should be. Uh, yeah, I, I I agree with you completely. Right, right. I, yeah, absolutely. The um, you could you could argue, you, I'm, Rabbi. I'm, you could I'm, argue that the rest of TV. Yeah, you know, it's not Doctor Who that's got worse. Maybe it's the rest of TV TV that's got better. But we know that that's not true. We know no, that's no, no, no. <laughs> all the TV is bad, right? All the TV is bad. But yeah, I think it's it's indicative that I am more excited about the or uh, when you had Ian Levine on your uh, on your channel and stuff. <laughs> you were talking about. I really am. I'm like I'm really here. Come, so yeah, let's look at the trailer again before we go into that, right? Let's go to for this. Okay, so well, let's. I want to go this like, like shot by shot. This shot annoys me, right? Too much turning into camera. Stop. Okay. Yes. This we'll shot annoys it, me. We get it. Yeah, we get it. This shot annoys me. Money spent for no bloody reason, and I, I don't like unit tower. It's the right? same. It's the same shot as before, is it? They would have just yeah, exactly. made the TARDIS go in a different direction. This looks brilliant, right? This, this I feel like I'm watching the Doctor at this point, right? This really feels iconic. Yeah. That's right. um, kind of like the Elvis um, 69 special, isn't it? It's that kind of look to it. Right, right, right. But I, I don't know why, because there's no dialogue here. He just feels authoritative here, right? Mm. It, it, he doesn't, it doesn't feel forced. So then we got like domestic stuff that's standard. Could it be, could it be simply having big hair in a suit? Uh, and having <laughs> is that really you're what not, you're not wrong? Means? You're not wrong. I mean, this this looks ridiculous to me, right? The t-shirt, the the leather jacket. It it doesn't feel like the Doctor. This feels like a a, a companion he picked up from Gallifrey. This feels like Romana 2.0 rather than Doctor. It doesn't feel authoritative. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Give me the loving. And again, hate all of that, right? Oh, just everything I just saw, I hate. Just, ah, why are you doing that to me? Now, stay back. We are going to rock through. I believe that. I did, I did believe it when he said stay back. I believe that he, he was the doctor in that moment. That was pretty cool. As the rabbi, as he no, glitched out. Oh, we're back. Okay, no, fine. My just went. I don't get a... Um, he, okay, this should have been his costume. The more I see him in this, the Probably. more I like it. Right, this works better than his like super gay, you know, tight T-shirt thing. The problem is that it, it's the suit is so tight and he's so ripped that this still looks gay. <laughs> uh, other than that, it I does, think but it, look, it, it, it looks more pucker, right? It looks more uh, um... together. It looks yeah. more idiosyncratic, which is what the Doctor should be. Right, right, right. It, this feels a lot more like the Doctor to me. It's a very bold reinterpretation of it. Uh, uh, but it still feels like on the right side. Mind you, but then I see him like booging away in a zoot suit there. <sighs> see, this will be fun if it was Sylvester McCoy or John Pertwee or somebody who was completely out of out. Of oh, do you remember? Was it the uh, War Machines when you had uh, uh, Bill Hartnell in in the Hellfire Club? Right, he went to the yeah. young club. In the, it that that really worked. Him leading it. Yeah, he, he looks like oh. the coolest. He looks like the coolest man in the room here. Not the, uh, and that's not that's not the doctor, basically. Exactly. Well, yeah. Even the day, even the David Tennant doctor rejected the, the that kind of coolest man. Even though he probably was the idea, mostly he was completely oblivious to it. Well, here, that's what this cool. doctor. Yeah, exactly. Whereas with this doctor, it, he seems like he is the coolest man in the room, and he knows it and he owns it, which is fine for standard heroism. But it's not the doctor. Which is weird that Rossi Davis is going this route, though, because you know you would have thought he knows this character inside out, but like I don't listen. You look, I, I mean, it's a you, conscious decision. It's it's not it's not accidental. No, no, this definitely. is a conscious decision that he feels is necessary to take the show to the next to the next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Level. Now, I, yeah look, I can't feel him on his, on his motivations. I just think his premises are wrong. Right? I mean, what, what I believe his motivation be. I, just, I can't. It's like I do think his premises are. 40, right? Gen uh, Jimmy, uh, they're going to lead us down. They're yeah. going to lead us down a blind alley because it means the doctor won't be. A Realistically, the doctor's going to struggle to come back from from that. It it's a one way street.
It's a one way street. Oh, I'm sorry. I just yeah. I just blacked out there. Uh, uh, I'm seeing me back. <laughs> um, what? I was just going to say something. Uh, Russell Davis, Doctor Who, don't understand. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'll come back. Maybe. Probably not. I do love that we've got that sort of shot that was very similar to the shot in the end of the world. I was just going to go back the, to that, right? I was yeah. literally going to go back to that. Uh, I, like, I think this one works really well. That, there's, a, there's a symmetry to that which I find uh, irresistible, which I suspect right, right, right. You know, Russell's this, this, aware of that. My guess is this is the Space Babies episode. Yes, that's what the yeah. canisters probably are on there. And, 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 you know, I just wish... Like, okay, I just wish they, they, they started on May the 4th, uh, two two p.m. in New York, seven p.m. in in London. Make it, it that I that more than anything has shot this era in in the foot. Well, right? it's and, my belief, and I I still believe the information that I had several weeks ago. They wanted the BBC, Bad Wolf, and Russell T Davies wanted to start this on May the fourth. It was Disney that insisted on the two episodes on the same on the same night. Right, because they're and, schmucks. That's why. They're, they're, it, but why? Because it's Disney policy to drop a uh, new series on Wednesdays or Fridays, and when it's a, a, a yeah. premiere, have a double episode. Because the BBC morons. And so it had to be that week because the BBC, what they wanted, what they always intended on doing, was partnering up the Devil's Cord with Eurovision. Yeah. That yeah. so that that was unmovable as well. So the 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 first episode, Space Babies, that has become collateral damage in effect. But no, it's not just that episode. That's the launch of the show that they that they've yep. lost, right? Yep. And I, that's why I, unless this is brilliant, and I don't think it's going to be. I don't think shooters. Well, the, actually, actually, having said that, let's stipulate it's the UK domestic launch of the show that it's screwed. If that's the no, pattern that no, works for, if that's, no, but what I'm saying is though, if that's the pattern that works for Disney with their other shows, then to be fair to them, if it's going if it's worked for them with other shows. In all their other territories, it's not necessarily at fault that they do that again. If it ain't if it ain't broke, don't fix it. What, what, but the what, British viewers, what would have been the harm in that having the British viewers have the premiere the week earlier? Well, uh, I, I I would submit to you that it hasn't worked for Disney. What show have they they put out that has that's been successful? Yeah, you know, well, again, in my in my terms, you know, I don't watch any of that stuff. So, I mean, you would think that if they do it standard with all their shows. Uh, they must count for the successes and the failures. And they've only had failures. Would... They've literally only had failures. Yeah, nothing, nothing that they've put out has pleased me. Let's put it that way. No, uh, no, but... no. I mean, they, 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 on a uh, uh, objective level, they only have failed. My daughter is the one who, you know, is in her mid twenties. She watches Disney Plus more than anybody else, and she doesn't watch anything. She watched all the stuff from when she was a kid. You know, that, 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 they, they they're watching the back catalog, which is the same with for most streaming services. Obviously, mate, our eyes are, as we are geeks, our eyes are all on genre programming. Is the double bill, is that is this method of launching a new show, is that typical across other genres as well? If yeah, it is, I, I, then... I, I, well, it, it. No, it's not genre is, is the issue. It's that the the method of storytelling. I, I, I did two, two reviews a, a couple of days ago, one for the show Constellation and one for the show Three-Body Problem. Have you seen either? No, no. So the, the basic difference with that, with no spoilers, is that uh, they're both solid shows. Three Body Problem, solid show, right? But uh, Constellation it is a story with characters with a beginning, middle, and end. There's a wink to you know stuff they could do in a second season, but I'm happy if that's the only season, right? It, I felt complete with it. Whereas Three Body Problem, it, I, I compare it to a soft serve ice cream machine, you know, they, they Mr. Whippy, right? And you have like a bit of plot come out and they stop randomly for episode one. Another bit of plot stop randomly for episode two. And so there's no shape to the story of the season. It doesn't even meet, reach a conclusion, right? So uh, if you're doing the, if then I call so I call three body problem content, where I call um, constellation television, right, or entertainment, right, or story. Yeah, I call it story where th this is uh, compared to content. If you're doing content, it makes sense to drop two episodes. Right, because it doesn't make us make a difference. They're not qualitatively. And, and I think I think that that's how I think that's how Disney views all their programming. Because uh, they're, they're and they're failing totally everywhere all the time. Right, and all I'm saying is they made up a bunch of arbitrary rules which they have to follow 
which now shot their investment in the foot. Now, the reason why it screwed up the the international launch, not just the UK launch, is that if you had a global launch uh, based around 7 p.m. UK yeah. time, right, you would have such a huge watch along thing. You would have a, you would have general global event TV. Yes. Yeah. And 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 that in of itself would have propelled this new era forward, right? Even if shooting isn't that great, it would have given it this boost to start. And they killed it. They taken it away. Uh, that's why I don't see this going beyond a second season. I'm really unless unless there's some. I don't see Rusty Davis staying for for a third season if if uh, Disney pulls the uh, the transgender shit. If they say no more transgender stuff. I don't see him since staying around. As I, as I understand it, Rus- Russell T. Davis is there for an extended period of time in one capacity or another. Uh, the idea, as it's been explained to me, is that it's not he won't be the showrunner indefinitely, and and they're and they're looking at sooner rather than later developing somebody to take his place in that role. But the Russell will always be involved in some capacity or another, whilst Doctor Who is with Bad Wolf. So that's the intention, uh, or was yeah, the that, intention. That, that, that's the intention. I'm looking for the clip where he. Where it's he the kind of godfather it. of Doctor Who. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, no, I understand. That's that, that's the intention, but I think that intention is based on having the creative freedom to promote uh, fringe sexualities as, as like normal. I think once that becomes an avenue that he can't, if not explore, then certainly celebrate. I think he'll, he could lose uh, momentum. I think uh, not lose interest, but I think he could lose momentum. And want to do other things. I, I don't know, but I think you, I think you're right that I don't know that was his driving force behind coming back. But I think it's part no. and parcel of I think it's part and parcel of the writer that Russell D- T Davies has become, and part of how sees how he sees the world and how how he sees the current uh, uh, balance, I suppose, of uh, programming for entertainment for people. He views it as non-negotiable, essential. This is not just what people. I, I think it's in, I think to him it's inconsequential as to whether it's what people want or not. It's what they need to see. What society needs to see present at all times, and and um, he, that's when I so when I say he's become ideologically captured, that's what I mean. Ah, I think I found the quote that, that I was talking about. One second, uh, Doctor Who showrunner says uh, Disney Plus uh, had to happen as the demise of BBC is undoubtedly on its way. So it says somewhere in here, right? I believe that uh, this contract is very open. In- It's in his best interests to, to say that. I, I, I believe it. I believe that. I believe everything he's saying is true. But because Russell T. Davis, as I've uh, as I've said, I think I said last week as well, Russell T. Davis is the most powerful creative in British television. Uh, there are more you, powerful executives. He, he was. <laughs> you you wait you wait till July first. Not so much, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's when yeah. whenever they where there's a I can't remember who it is, but there's one. Is it the Evening Standard that every year in the midsummer they publish that list of the 100 most powerful people in right. British British uh, yeah, culture? Or always above him. Actually, she wasn't last year. She wasn't. No, 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 no. Uh, no, no, hey, no so yeah, Francis. So Again, what is Disney's big failing with every franchise they're involved with? A complete lack of understanding of it and an intransient to understand it. Right? Like yeah. they refuse, yeah. and, which is, uh, and again, and it's not like they got this piece of, you know, absolute diamond gold to ready to go. They got something that's very iffy that no one's really sure of, right? Uh, it's uh, the British public are still not talking about Doctor Who. Right, exactly, exactly. They're not doing. I, I, you know, I know it's and it's still six weeks away. To be fair, uh, the the British public aren't talking about anything that tends to be more than six days into the future at the moment because we're all somewhat distracted. And we, we're far too concerned with the price of a loaf of bread. To be fair, but, <laughs> by the way, I saw I saw the best uh, uh, illustration of of why uh, this 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 election in America is going, going to be a landslide. You had uh, Bill Bill Maher, you know the. Very mm. famous liberal, liberal comedian going, I guess Biden's going to lose because hot dogs are too expensive. I'm like, how condescending can Amazing. you get? Yes, that is why he's going to lose, you yeah. dumb cunt. Absolutely. 
Because hot dogs are too expensive. Don't be so condescending. Why do you think? Why do you think he chose to say the to say hot dogs though, rather to than be something? belittling to poor people? Of course, it's the same sort of. It's the same class thing we get in Britain. The whole idea about oh the gammons are upset. It's always right. working class white working class people who eat the average thing on the average day. They might they may eat on the go because they're the ones doing all the bloody work. So yeah, right. the guys in the, tr- the, in the trucker hats with the hot dogs. Yes, they and they have every right to be upset if they are upset because it's their it's their money, their dollar that's been devalued, just as it's the same in Great Britain. And and people like this Bill Maher, did you say his name was? An, in, an entitled elitist twat. And we get them in America, we get them in Britain, and we, you probably get them the whole world over. You, you get them a lot more in America now. Like America is much more classist than it used to be. Right? I've noticed like, that. Strange, isn't it? it, it it's because... The land of the free. No, it's because of money, essentially. M- m- money and class became uh, uh, intertwined. The, it's that whole thing. Anyway, let's go back to this trailer. So, here, yeah, I want to point something out here, which I, I, I really don't mind. A lot of people really hate. You can see here, this is colorblind casting all the way through uh, uh, this crowd. Which, uh, to be fair, uh, they, they are telling you in the dialogue what they are doing. <laughs> Bridgerton right. is mentioned in both trailers. Uh, right, 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 so, right. Uh, it's fine. I have no issue with this uh, at honestly, all on I, this I, principle. My only problem with it is that we're living in the age of woke, uh, uh, and this is a... Um, as f- as fuel to, to the work, but look, I, I'm I, I'm fine with te- the, the the example I gave before you came on was like we're used to a blonde white Jesus, right? It's Easter. Yes. We're, we're all, we're all, he was totally not blonde. I mean, <laughs> I, I I didn't hang out with him that much. He still owes me a fiver, but you know, uh, 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 <laughs> he's totally not blonde and white, right? <laughs> get, get real. Uh, um, and it's fine because it reflects our society. And uh, this, this doesn't. This is one of the few things that doesn't bother me. So I think it's worth worth mentioning. Okay, this is so fucking gay. Wanna fuck? Yes, you dirty, dirty bastards. Yeah. The, the, this is th- this this kind of thing. Y- the doctor isn't Captain Jack. You know, I mean, no. okay. You know, I I don't think the doctor should be a sexual being of any kind. And. Yeah, we've seen him wink at women, but uh, they, they are deliberately here b- playing to a mob, uh, in my opinion. Yeah, they're play- they, look, they, they, they are pl- not, they're, they're playing to a very small mob at that, right? I just... The people making, making modern entertainment, uh, I should clarify, they are the dirty bastards. They're obsessed with sex, and yeah. it's, per- it's permeated. I mean, I know that Rabbi is probably a bit rich for you and I. Because <laughs> <Yeah, yeah, yeah. laughs> I think about yeah, sex yeah, a lot. You know what, like, why I do all the sexual thumbnails? It's to counterbalance all this shit yeah, all the time. Yeah. It's like, yeah. you want to say sex everywhere? It's Fine, different. I've got sex everywhere. You know, yeah. it kind of works for me that way. God, that's so gay. But then exactly. you get back to Billy Gibson, and I'm kind of okay again. Oh, yeah, this is so Bridgerton. Uh, yeah. The Gibson twins. Uh, <laughs> in, in, in ladies. Um, I just, yeah. like, how do they fire her? It's beyond me. It's just beyond, like, everything, I, every time I see her, I, I think it, I I, I, uh, um, I relate to her. Yes, that's the magic of that's the magic of this of this young woman. To be fair, yeah. she seems like somebody that you would know. It's the same. It was the same with Pearl Mackey as Bill Potts. It was the yeah. same yeah, to yeah. a certain extent with Catherine Tate as Donna, with Freema as Martha, and with, with Billy as Rose to some extent as well. Even though Billy was a known person, she managed to completely disappear into into the role of Rose Tyler. So even that worked. Right, it, re- it, it redefined it, and I I don't mind them mentioning Bridgerton. This uh, this is a second no. Bridgerton quote, by the way, so it's fine, right? For me, it's because like the, the target audience watch Bridgerton and like it. This is Ruby. You are wild, brave, and rude. Ah! No, you made it worse. Okay, that Where was a really good go? line, right? That was an excellently delivered line. Exactly really, really what my exactly what the kind of thing that my stepdaughter would say to me if I was messing around under the sink at home. Exactly. Yeah, 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 what yeah. Would say. Totally believable, right? Totally believable. And I like the uh, the bit on Abbey Road, right? This is really cool. This is. I mean, I like this a lot. This is what I would do as a time traveler if I was a super hot girl with uh, you know a, a a attractive gay guy in a suit suit. Where shall we go? 
the thing that I don't like about this trailer, which I loved about the first one, is I think the, the music on this one is so generic. Whereas the first one had got that fantastic David Bowie remix, I, I could still hear oh, right, it. Right, right. Because I, I, I was trying to think of some Murray Gold stuff you were re- referencing, and I'd like what? Oh, the David Bowie stuff. I, I yeah. Agree. This feels the design of this feels very 2000 AD. Feels like very strong Jim Dog to me. Yeah, yeah. Anywhere, it's you, Space Baby. Yeah, man. I don't know. It's like. Space baby, it just annoys me. I, I'm sorry. It just seems. I mean, maybe it's going to be great. It just seems stupid. It seems dumb. Always in the universe, man. Let's have a run. Was it Call of the Universe? Was so much better. Random landing. Is it safe? Listen to me. This is what we're trying to stop. All of life extinguished. You keep us safe. Every time I hear him deliver a line, I just I don't I, it's not working for me, right? And I re- and everybody said, "Oh, he's great." I don't know what to do. I will keep us safe. I, I didn't believe that tip. This was like, "Look at me, I'm a sensitive person." I don't yeah. believe it. this is this is also you've described this to me before as suffering saint syndrome. That is what we're seeing here. If you, he's doing well as, as as a black person who is he's able to have a bit more agency than they, they normally let black people have. I, I see that as somebody who I say that as somebody who gen who generally is still fine with Shooter Gatwa having this role. I don't see him as a miscast, but I am worried that he could be being mismanaged. Um we, in, with Jody Whitaker, for example, we've got somebody who was miscast and mismanaged. Uh, here, I think we're we're possibly seeing one of those things come into into force. I mean, I think he's. Uh, I don't think he's as miscast as Jodie Whittaker. Right? Oh God, no, we're no, no. It's not I even think he has the ability close. to bring it. We've seen shots in this where he he he's, he feels uh, uh, authority, but I think he's being mismanaged. I think he's being mismanaged because uh, Russell is completely ideologically captured. Uh, yeah. That's what's that's what's going to tank the show. If anything, if anything ruins this, it it won't be Shooty. It'll be Russell being ideologically captured. Uh, oh, Charlotte says she's saying it sounds childless. I not childless, childish, right? Uh, uh, I do agree with you, Charlotte. Hi, Charlotte. Come on, we've got work to do. <laughs> Again, she was great. He was completely fake, all right? That's he, he, yeah, he was cocky and too cool for score. That's that's a very fine line you walk with this character when you're when you're pulling those moves. Very fine line indeed. I I, I think it could have worked. Eccleston did it. Eccleston could do it, but Eccleston wasn't conventionally good looking. He got a big nose and big ears and a silly accent. Shooty Gatwa. He's too good looking. He's too. You know, I, wish, I, I wish I could go back in time and tell Colin Baker. Play it with a coat, do everything you do, but act like you are the coolest person ever. <laughs> that would have really worked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that <would've, laughs> this looks like it's from the last episode from the... Um, it's certainly from the final, from the two-part finale, yeah. Right, right, called, uh, was it Empire Terror? This is the this is the, Christopher Nol- this is the Christopher Nolan shot, isn't it? This is the... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a strong <laughs> shot, right? This is a good effect shot. The storm coming in. You call. Just, yeah, I, I don't know. I, as, I, I'm a massive fan of the Beatles. Episode two is gonna for me. I, I have to write this off. I can't stand musical episodes. I think that person is an absolute arsehole who shouldn't be anywhere near this brand. What, what, if, what if, if every episode is a musical episode? Somebody, somebody said that to me in the comments section last week. Oh, it's clearly every episode is going to be a musical episode now, is it? Uh, <laughs> well, some, that that, that room has been going around. That room has been going around a lot. It's clearly, clearly not true. I don't know. I'll find out. I see. I, there's nothing you can tell me that I wouldn't go. Oh, that can't happen. <laughs> there's nothing you can tell me. Um, fine. So what are we up to? Fine. So we got that shot. Oh, I'm coming in. You called. Now, okay, we've had camp villains before. I mean, Helen A. Who are the campus villains in Doctor Who you can think of? Uh, Candyman, Candy, that happiness. Bro. This is in a different universe. Yeah, I mean, you could you could argue that this is, for example, Graham Crowden and Richard Briers in the classic show. 
They didn't yeah, know Richard they were Price being... was like and the, one, one of the worst parts of Doctor Who. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't realise that what he was doing was incongruous. Uh, Jinx Monsoon has been told... That they've been hired because this is what they do. That's who Jinx Monsoon is. I have to remind people, Jinx Monsoon isn't a real person. Jinx Monsoon is like Dame Edna Everidge. It's a character that a, that a, a man plays. It's a, it's some, it's an, it's a creation uh, and who does, who performs in this overtly camp manner. So I suppose you, you would book, if you booked, for example, you if you want to book Barry Humphreys, you'd book Barry Humphreys like they had him in the Spice Girls movie. They had him playing that businessman, didn't they? They had him playing the Rupert Murdoch yeah, this guy. Is like booking Barry Humphreys saying, we want you to play Dame Edna playing a Doctor Exactly. Who. Did they book Barry Humphreys or did they book Dame Edna? Here they booked da- uh, they Dame, Dame Edna. Dame Edna. Right, they totally booked Dame Edna. Honey, I'm a much bigger bang than you bargained for. See, again, that's way too sexual. A much bi- I'm a much bigger bang than you bargained for. Dirty bastards. Like, like, for God's sake, can you not have to talk about... Even kids, that? even kids will get that. That's yes. disgusting. Yes, of course they will. Why? Because they're all over TikTok telling them to suck each other's dicks. God's sake. I will shatter this silly little battlefield into dust. In a heartbeat. Into dust. Yeah. This strikes me as Jodie Whittaker level confrontation. Right, no, no, not as bad. The the Jodie Whittaker versus Lenny Henry was one of the worst confrontations I've ever that, seen. That was absolutely that was absolutely awful. It was like watching two people get into an argument over a parking space at Lidl. This is this is again the dialogue is so so much better. Yeah, uh, I, I just have to see more of him to know whether the lead up to this is worth that moment because in that moment that looks like Doctor Who. See, it doesn't to me, right? It doesn't it, for me. It doesn't look like, doesn't feel like he's bringing it, right? Uh, um, sadly, right? Uh, but maybe look, again, again, I'm really working hard to say, say, uh, open-minded. I don't have a people. I don't have a home. Okay, this looks good though, right? I mean, uh, um, this the, the multiple costumes actually work. It's just his main costume, I think, sucks. Well, I don't have I'm, a I'm actually fine. I'm fine with the multiple costumes idea. It reminds me of, you know, I was talking about this a little the other day, and I, it's a bit of a, a reach because I don't think it's deliberate that they're harkening back to the black and white era. I think this is just just something else. But it reminds me of um, the movie Highlander, where we see Christopher Nolan, uh, Christopher Nolan, Christopher Lambert. Sometimes he is obviously in the dirty raincoat in the streets of New York. Next time we see he's in the Regency. Uh, have uh, fighting with um, uh, fencing with some dude. You know, it's that. It's like a man who's in all these times time periods. I think it's a perfectly viable place to take the Doctor, and it's worked before. It could work again, but it's, it's just it's. it's I think no. I think it, I think it. I think it worked to some extent like that in the sixties, in the with the Hartnell Doctor, and I think to some extent they toyed with it a little in the seventies, but the Doctor was a lot more emblemic. Then. Yeah, but he, okay. One second. Yeah, let me show you. Uh, <laughs> we're grabbing multiple action figures, right? Yeah. Okay, on. So we have Tom Baker, Doctor Who. Tom Baker, Doctor Who, hmm. and Tom Baker, Doctor Who. Three different costumes, right? Three different costumes, all with the same silhouette. Right, and, no, and I, you know, you know me, I've been I've been banging on about the silhouette for for two to three years. And uh, and I don't disagree with any of that. And to compromise that, you have to be to have to to lead with something that's an alternative to that. You've got to be have everything nailed down and to and to do whatever you're doing with conviction. I don't know whether he's doing that or not, but I think that that's what they're trying to. I, I think so. they are. I think they are looking to the character almost to be like a live action version of Mister Ben, I th- which uh, <laughs> to to the I, I, to the I, I, experiment. What's that? That's, I mean, Chris, Crystal Eccleston is Mr. Ben. Perfect. I like it. Go for that. And it's a pity. I, I personally, that's not to my taste. I would rather they do the thing where the doctor, like, like Chris Eccleston says, yeah, well, what's the matter? I've changed my jumper. I'll right. be fine. I, that to me, that's the doctor. But to, I'm not going to say that, that this, all of this won't work because they're doing that. It, I can't it say won't. That until I've seen the season. Ex- exactly. Yeah, I mean, but. Uh... Indications are not good. If it's a magic eight balls, it's a magic eight balls. It, it is very 50 50 at best. It isn't really it? is. I have freedom. Catch a monster's game. 
he just said he doesn't have a home anymore. So Gallifrey's still gone again, I guess. Was that Captain Jack? Was that Captain Jack's squareness gone? That guy just pulled out of his. Let's have a look. Pocket. Where was that? Didn't see anybody pull out a gun. That dude, the guy he was flirting with in the uh, oh, Regency. Where is it? Just before this. TARDIS looks a little more interesting, little like that, doesn't it? I uh, still don't like the TARDIS. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's, there's so much work that needs to be done with it. Where was it? The, uh... Oh, here it goes. I don't think he had a gun there. No, in the, in the latest scene that we've just watched? Let me try and find it. Towards towards the end. Every time I see Jigsaw soon, it's like uh, um, running like uh, um, foil on a uh, on a, on a uh, filling. It's like ah. That that character and that person. I mean, in some ways, it's good to have it out of the way. Week one, in some way, for the British audience, because that will be to the British audience. They'll see that a lot of people won't let their kids watch it because she's in it. And there'll be a bunch of people who will just bail afterwards because they'll just feel that I, like I feel, my God, that was 50 minutes of, of irritation. Uh, the, a great many people don't respond to the musical episode genre thing. It's not right for, it's, it's not right for Doctor Who. They shouldn't be doing it. But the, same, and the, the, the frustrating thing is this looks great. This looks like a Doctor Who silhouette. Yeah, yeah. It looks quite charming. You're yeah, right. But people, I don't have a home. I mean, he even looks less like goofy and into himself here with this hair. I even right. don't mind the idea that yeah, yeah, I mean that looks like that's a Doctor Who haircut. Right. His hair should be like that all the time. Yeah, yeah, this should be his look. Wouldn't this be great if he was in like I'd, yeah, 1980s England or? I'd loosen. You know what? I'd loosen it up a little bit. I don't think the, I yeah. think the jacket should be should be fastened like that. But I think uh, and the the shirt done right the way up. Or if the shirt is done right the way up, then the jacket it should be looser. He was right when Shooter himself said that he wanted to go with that preppy that preppy look. He was right, and they told him no. We want to dress you as in in bright orange. We want to make you look super instead. gay at every he moment. He was he was right. His instincts for the character were right, which is why that leads me to believe That's that he isn't that he isn't miscast. He hasn't been miscast, but he could be mismanaged, and he should the hair, the hair should be like this all the time. I agree with you. It's so much better. It really is so much better. The more, the more I see it, yeah. And he's because if you, you're cutting here, well, you're not you personally, but we're cutting now. We're having this fade-in shot to Regency times, and again, he's immediately more interesting because yeah. he's got slightly bigger hair. <laughs> right, right, right. I, yeah, I agree with Paul you. Paul McGann said this was a, a hair part, and he was right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, that was a thumbnail I was working on today for. Um, pull this up. Big finish. Uh, uh, I'm very happy about this. They're continuing the War Doctor range. Right? Yes, great news. I'm really happy about it. And also their plan for it is also very good. Uh, one second. But yeah, uh, uh, getting the hair right on this uh, young John Hurt was a nightmare, but it was vital. <laughs> right? It really was. It was vital. Hey, did a great job. <laughs> Thank you. Well, he did, he, because their blog was cut out from the, the cover that I took it from. Anyway, anyway, yeah, you know, this is a hair. <laughs> I agree with you completely. Fine, there we go. Freedom. Catching monsters, getting into scrapes. Oh, there, there. That was, let me see if he had the gun. Right, I think I just saw the clip you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, I don't think it was the square right. gun, but it was very similar. Yeah, yeah no, was it was... Uh... Monsters, getting into scrapes. So I keep moving on. To see the next thing. And the next, and the next. Have you ever... Yeah, this this is wrong. <laughs> this is a bad idea. I wish that, they would. That isn't the doctor, right? That that's the doctor's friend. That's the doctor. Yep. That's the doctor's cool companion. Captain that Jack would really would do be that. great in the show. In fact, if Jodie Whittaker or a female Joe Grant would do that, it would have worked better. Yeah, maybe. Have you ever felt so alive? And that's just the beginning. So there you 
you go. I haven't heard it. <laughs> I am not enthused. Uh, I'll, look, I'm, I'm, I'm more enthused than I am for Star Trek Discovery, which I'm like, <laughs> I was begging for an apocalypse. Right? It's I, like I, comparing it to your appointment for a colonoscopy. Oh, God. So, <laughs> I'm well, looking forward well, to this more than that. <laughs> what, one other note I, 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 I yeah. think I've, I've gleaned is this. The, um, uh, who is it? From the, here, let me grab, grab that uh, from the first trailer. There's, there's a shot in it which uh, from the Regency one. And I, I, I'm, I'm assuming this is from, from the Regency one. Where is it? Where you, where you get a bit of David Tennant in there. So I, I adored this trailer. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. It, it left me totally cold. <laughs> like, I forget, why? Because there should be that one. The flashes between him in various... In that, that was good. Episodes. I agree with you. I agree and with her, you. And her as well, how they did it yeah, with her, yeah, where yeah. Ruby, like, she looks older and she's drinking a glass of wine. And it, 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 yeah, that, that bit, it goes, yeah. there, she's upset. She, that, just fantastic. I just love this. To me, this is Doctor Who. They they had some very good uh, touches in it, but I'm trying to find the. Uh, I'm, the I'm a little less keen on this second trailer, uh, but I do think we see we see a few more. We do see more of Shooty's range in that, which is probably what we needed to see. Mm-hmm. I just don't think it was as exhilarating as the first trailer. Yeah, I I, I, I wish I was exhilarated by it. Have there's, there's this one shot in here I really, I really, I really want to show you, which is uh, when you see it, you'll recognize it. Mm. Where is it? Is it over here? Oh, oh, I think did I just go for it? No, that's the. I never uh, thought I'd say. I never thought I'd be saying this thirty-seven years later. But the more Bonnie Langford as Mel, the better. <laughs> funny, funny thing there, yeah. So uh, <laughs> let, let me just let it run through. Okay, I'm going to turn the sound off because otherwise I'll be commenting on it. Yeah. Non-stop. He, he, yeah, uh, Millie Gibson still insanely hot as a lizard woman. I mean, slightly hotter, in fact, as a lizard woman. <laughs> uh, um, weird, 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 but true. Uh, even hotter there. But yeah, there's a uh, oh, man. That that that's probably from the Moffat episode. Boom. They, the only upside is that it's good that they get the Jinx Monster in episode out of the way as soon as possible. Week one could be better than week two. Uh, maybe more people uh, won't write the entire uh, thing off. I mean, maybe it's a big maybe. Be maybe they'll be good. I don't know. What she, she, will do, she will do what she's been hired to do. Uh, so they haven't booked Barry Humphreys. <laughs> no, they haven't. <laughs> no, the they other haven't. one. Oh, this the post-apocalyptic stuff in the sixes look good. There's a lot of stuff in the The only thing that looks shit from the sixth episode is Jinx Monsoon, frankly. Yep. And Shooty being the centre of. Uh, Actually, you're right. All the all the clips we've seen, we've seen a, we have seen a lot of clips from that episode in both trailers. Jinx Monsoon ke- seems completely anachronistic to all of that. Yeah, yeah, really genuine. How can I not find this clip? This is just annoying the hell out of me. Fuck, I've got to go back again. I've said it once and I'll say it again. What a winker. Oh, there's, there's a lot of it. <laughs> Give me the loving. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, when he said that, I thought, what? <laughs> yeah, Give me I, what? I, I, <laughs> uh, the TARDIS just... I mean, look, the, the, this TARDIS needs to have, like, lots of different lighting things going on. Right? Oh, here it is. There you go. Uh, yeah, this was the bit, bit that you really like. So... This is from the Regency episode. The Regency episode is written by uh, what's the name? The, uh, the two birds uh, from Loki. Yeah, the Loki birds. As we go, Kate Heron and Briny Redman. Right. So they look to me like they're in their mid thirties. Yes. So I uh, the there's a rumor that the Clockwork Droids are coming back in this season. So I assume that would be the Moffat episode, but it doesn't look like it was Moffat's episode. This looks like it. It looks like the same kind of technology as the Clockwork Droids. Uh, David Tennant reference in it is a reference, and I think they are they're of an age they saw probably saw this in their late teens, early yes, 20s. They would have been and very it made impressionable. A great impression on them, and they it's like yeah. us, it's like reviving the Asirons or something. I'm so. trying, I'm trying not to write this episode off, um, based on the terrible Loki series. Um, maybe they they're both lifelong Doctor Who fans. Maybe they get this character, and maybe they love this show. So I'm going to try and be a little more generous towards t- towards those two ladies. But um, yeah, any just any attachment to Loki, I, I it's it's really not good. But it's, it's a tough yeah, sell. The, the uh, uh, I mean, the trouble is they've just um, 
uh, yeah, they, 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 I, they just build up so much bad ill will. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's like I, I, for no reason, right? For no reason, what uh, whatsoever, other than that they want to um, lecture you, essentially, right? Uh, uh, yes, that that will be their first instinct. And Russell T. Davies will not be the person who takes them aside and, and says that they need to lessen that, to diminish no, that. They're, anyway. they're 100% on board for it. Actually, they're, they're... actually no, I think I could be being unfair there because he, he did say, if you remember last year, how part of his, his role as a mentor to young writers, that thing that he does, I can't remember what it's called, the, the, the uh, that. I can't remember what, it's, what he, he does, but he mentors young writers through it. And he right. does say that he has to pick up young writers on that all the time. So maybe he will. But the problem is that that these aren't young, unpublished writers. These are uh, young, woolly-headed writers who've had some success and a certain amount of smoke blown up their arse by, by having scripts, several scripts, as part of a major series attached to a major brand. So... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to find this other thing that somebody sent me. Uh, again, the thing I'm much more interested in is the stuff that that, that Ian Levine's doing, right? And, and th- that that episode you had, the that, that when it was on was fantastic. I can't wait. Oh, you mean uh, where is it? I've got it here. You mean this? <laughs> right. You mean this little fella? Hey. Yeah, yeah. This was, I think, the most Thank interesting you. thing to happen in Doctor Who for a long time, like a really long time. But where is it? Ian, oh, here he goes. Yeah, I found what, what, what would you say if I said there's more? What would you say to that? <laughs> uh, I will say I'm I'm there, baby. I can't wait to see it. Right? Do you I think? Do you think the fandom it. would like to see some more of us with Ian Levine? Is well, that what, what, why, so. why? Why wouldn't they? <laughs> like, why, so, why on earth wouldn't tuned. they? Oh, and stay yeah, tuned, yeah. everybody. Stay tuned. I. I I, I got the feeling he, he he had a good time, right? Yes, I think it's safe to say that he did have a good time. Yeah, he he got it, and uh, and we had a good time. Yeah, we had a good laugh. Uh, he's uh, very uh, well, as everybody knows. He is one of the authorities on Doctor Who. He was very authoritative. So yes, it, it, that that sort of came with the territory. But I think what people didn't expect was for him to be quite so playful and for him to be uh, quite so that, but, but, generous. Okay, there's a lot that I didn't really. I knew, but it wasn't really top of my mind with him. Like how much, uh, how he's always moving forward, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, like he's in his seventies, maybe eighty. Yes, no. He's just right? hit. He's just hit seventy. Yeah. Right, right, and he is um, constantly looking for for new ways to achieve his goals, right? Which I found find really, really fascinating. So somebody sent me. There's a three minute AI clip. Of uh, wheel in space, like the 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 first three minutes, um, yes. and they tell me it's in Levine stuff, but I I assume it is. But this, uh, yeah. this one I found much more impressive. Yeah, so it's downloading now. Oh, daily motion takes too long. He has sent it to me, but I've been I've been out, so I haven't seen it. All right, fine. But but, uh, um, but yeah, there's a lot going on, right? Yeah, he he. This really really humanized him in in a. Um, Really wonderful way. Like I, I really understand where he's coming from now. Like he's been shit on a lot over the years, right? And he's done a lot for Doctor Who. Like, like basically the DVD range, the Blu-ray range, is because of him. It, we, we wouldn't have that. It would probably to be start. fair. Yeah. To be fair, we probably wouldn't have had the VHS range without him either. Yeah. I had no idea until I. And bear in mind that I'd read interviews with Ian. I've seen him talk before. Uh, you know, so I was aware of something, but I didn't realise quite how deep it all ran. And I certainly had no idea of the personal financial sacrifices right. that well, this I, one I man had made. That he paid for it, but I just, like, they didn't put it together. And, like, for him to, look, I, I don't think he's looking to be revered and, and no. like, worshipped. I think he's looking to not be shat on by his, like... By kids who are his inferiors, frankly, right? I, I think that's in some way. respects, they're by pe- by people who are th- who are a third, never mind half, a third of his age, who heard, who probably only heard of him two or three weeks ago, connected completely to X uh, under some sort of bracket of people who it's okay to be disrespectful, respectful, and rude towards. Oh, this guy is one of them. It's it's outrageous, uh, and it's 
in, in my view, I think he's actually shown quite a lot of patience with him. He's perhaps, you know, he'll say, he said, very first thing when we brought him onto the show was, you know, some people don't like me because I speak my mind. And he, he's, he's right. I think, I think as time moves on, we're getting less accustomed to people who speak their mind, who speak plainly and with conviction. He's, he's becoming a man out of time before his time because this guy, He's just He won't mind me saying he's just hit 70. He's got the energy and vision of someone half of his age. He's an extraordinary person, yes, and he's that great. Was the, that was the thing that came over like really, really strongly, right? It came over uh, uh, la- was it loud and clear. Now, th- uh, what you're saying just ties in something that St- Stephen Moffat said recently about... Uh, here, let me pull up this thing. One second. Share screen. Uh, about uh, Doctor Who is not about you shouldn't it shouldn't be uh, it's not the job to reflect society, right? Uh, do, 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 but where, where else is he's right? Uh, yes. Yeah, so do you do you do you want your television to just broadcast agreement in your face? Yes. These kids from TikTok and, and yes, they uh, need it to. That's the, and you know why they want to uh, broadcast in their face because they believe bullshit, right? They believe absolute bollocks and they know it's absolute bollocks. And that's why they need to be constantly reaffirmed. That's why Easter Sunday is now Trans Visibility Day. Because, like, yeah, that that's the thing that's going to last. Anyway, here, let me put in, I mean, in Britain. In Britain, it was Trans Visibility Day about three weeks ago. Oh, so uh, the president can frankly go and do one. Wait, wait, wait. Where is this? Uh, this is a list of all the Trans Visibility Days over the last few years. There's hundreds. It's crazy. Anyway, wait, wait, wait forget that. The, the, I haven't seen this yet, right? So this is a new AI clip of Web of uh, Wheel in Space, not Web of Fear. We can't just leave her. We're not leaving her, Jamie. It was her decision to stay. Oh. She'd be perfectly all right with the Harrises. Now, don't worry so much. I'm not. I'm just... So, where I think this doesn't work is the cutting, right? And they're, they're quite restricted by the visual material they have. That, that, I think I was talking to you about this. I can't remember. That yes. They really yeah. need to have, just generate a bunch of new images via AI, face swap them, and then then this thing would flow much better. We're right? not leaving her, Jay. And this is this is somewhat disappointing because the uh, Dalek Master Plan, they're, they're, those expressions were perfect. This one, his eyes feel a little bit dead. It was her decision to stay. Oh. She'd be perfectly all right with the Harrises. Now, don't worry so much. I'm not. I'm just... Oh, come on, let's go. Well, where would you like to go? Hmm? I couldn't kill this. See, the trick with this, the trick with this, the important thing with these, and the, the real key to opening up this way of, of, um, of rejuvenating those stories is to engage with us. Ian will will be the first to admit that he's aware that these things need a lot of work and they're not perfect. Yeah. Everything that he'll be the very first person to say that. But but the the trick is, as somebody who's watched every episode as a as a, a still picture uh, recon, I, I, I've watched them all. But you know your attention wavers because the image isn't moving. What he's doing here, what they're doing, that team is that I think that. And in many respects, I think they're right to focus on this as the fundamental, as the as, as the founding stone of reinventing these things is to make sure it holds our attention the way live action stuff does. Right, to the I point agree where you. to the point where we 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 um, it never loses our eye, and the the story, the momentum of the story is what moves forward. The stuff like likenesses. Uh, the preciseness of the timing, which I think is absolutely next to bang on, the majority of the time with that, all of that will refine and uh, and define in time, uh, uh, as the uh, as everything else does, as the rendering you. and the movement of it does. But I think they're right to concentrate on the movement. I think they're right to concentrate to concentrate on making sure they don't lose your attention in the way the show would have done. In '65, that's it. Captivated kids for right, 23 right, right. minutes, didn't lose them, and we know from watching black and white stuff that does still exist. We know that that material can still do that now. So, in my view, that's why they're right to concentrate efforts where where they do. Oh no! I, I even though for me it's it, 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 it's not it's not working so great. 
the 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 energy of Ian Levine, right, to push this media forward, right? The, just like we only have the, 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 the we only have like BHS, right? We only have old Doctor Who because of Ian Levine. I think that we we only have um, we're only moving the, uh, we're, we're we're moving this forward. Even so, even though these these are unsuc- in my opinion, un- unsuccessful, that they are so vital to happen, right? Because they are going to become successful. But here, let me show you. Uh, so I think well, he's the he's the there. one. He's the one with the with the with the vision for this. Yeah. That's most in tune with what the fandom what the fandom wants, what's feasible financially, uh, broadly. Certainly within the BB the BBC BBC Studios can afford this. Oh, it's ridiculous! BBC they spend what thirty thousand uh, pounds or dollars on 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 an episode, I believe. To that was, those were those were Ian's figures. I've not. I, I haven't got. Any information myself? Oh, I, I think he's uh, he's well, very really well connected in this respect, right. Ian. So I've got no reason not to believe him. Right, right. I think he's probably right. Uh, uh, and he's spending what two or three thousand on these, right? Could you imagine two, this with thirty thousand on it? It would be. Uh, uh, and again, I I would reshoot a lot of stuff and face swap and uh, and do stuff like that. But yeah, I just want because if if you haven't seen the Dalek Master Plan one, I just want to show people that this I found I found much more successful. Mm. What is that? Well, we're slowing down, my dear. We're going to land in a moment. Have reached the place of perfection so soon. Yeah, well, I... so but again, if they could just get more pictures, that's incredible. Or... That particular moment yeah. there, that it that's yeah, incredible. If they could just get more pictures of uh, yes, we need a special... Jacqueline Hill, right. I shall have to land somewhere. <laughs> yeah, this is perfect. Right, this, this little bit is absolutely perfect. It holds your attention, it fools yeah. your brain, and it tells the story in that moment. And Doctor Who, like all television, it's a succession of moments that hold your attention, that tell a story. That's uh, it? it's doing the job. And, and very few things tell stories nowadays. Fine, I think, I think yeah. I'm going to wrap up. You're, 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 you're off for a, a week or so, are you? We are, we are off. But well, one of our shows, one of our shows is off. Which one is it? It's, uh, it's this one. It's this one. So this show is off. But the beauty of it is, through the wonder of the internet, is that you can catch us at any point in the next few days there, and and keep the Easter spirit alive with our all out Easter extravaganza. We went to air with yeah. all the episode titles for uh, season one of all new Doctor Who. Okay, it turns out only one of them were correct. But <laughs> which one did you get right? Uh, the Devil's Court. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love your uh, your Dalek Easter egg over there. That, that, that was good. Yeah, I didn't know it was Easter this weekend until your show. By the way, the, the, this is what broke the news to me. Well, in Britain they're playing it down. It's it's a uh, spring festival. Again, I'm <laughs> Jewish. You can't. For God's sake, I can say Happy Easter. What's wrong? Like, <laughs> yeah, so I've just been, I've just been going around saying it to as many people as possible constantly yes, all day every day. I, 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 you know, and like it's not like Jews and Christians have had the best relationship for the last couple of thousand years, and I'm still fine with it, right? <laughs> Good man. I mean, yeah, I mean the information that I was given by several. Uh, to be fair, I was told that they were working titles, and I was even told, as I said earlier on, that the episode one was now called Space Babies. But I thought. There's no way they're going to go There's with that. There's no way. In a million years, they could ever, ever do that. Did you see my thumbnail for today, by the way? I I haven't. I, I've, I've been doing what the average British man does on a public holiday earlier you today. I know, I've been sleeping. Oh, even even <laughs> I've, had a, I've had a nap. I, I have actually done some DIY as well. <laughs> 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 Uh, oh, Christ! Oh. Uh, I, <laughs> the I love Millie Gibbs against the fuck you, Joe Line. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, oh my <laughs> word! Um, and this is why you come to my channel, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, uh, for this kind of, kind of like cutting edge. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it's as bold as ever. Uh, uh, yeah. Did you did you see a, a hearing of the uh, saffron still when it was? I heard through? them when they were out. I've got these. Oh, fine, fine. So, yeah, this, this, one, this one I'm quite excited about. Oh, I look at my Great tagline man. for the Doc Two magazine: uh, another cheap and lazy issue with all the care, attention, and thought that goes into an average issue of Razzle. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, and listen, I'm being nice. I said Razzle and not Nave. Okay, so uh, uh, you're, you're welcome. Things could uh, be worse, Jason. Things could be worse. Man, that that I can't. This magazine is shit. 
<laughs> it's like it's just so shit. It, it's, it's beyond belief. I, I'm, it's being quite, I'm being quite. I'm, I'm being quite patient with it because I'm willing it to find its feet again. Um, but come on, come on, guys, pull it together. Joe's <laughs> back in two months. And again, Jason Quinn is a fascinating guy. I could watch him twenty four seven. He really, really. Like, I think that's probably quite handy because I think he'd be happy for people to watch him and take pictures twenty four seven. He does seem to be into that, right? He does seem to be. Into Hello, that. Jason. Like, if you're watching, it, but it's. Uh, um, <laughs> it's weird. I think this is I, everything about this is lazy. That cover is lazy. Oh, it, well, you know, <laughs> I mean, we have now for several months, not just you and I. But most of fandom, as soon as the cover to Doctor Who magazine has hit social media, it's been torn apart. They've been so bad. Uh, anybody with an ounce, like you and I, were both graphic designers. Anybody with an ounce of, of skill in this field could see the basic tenets they weren't observing. Balls they were, they were not just fumbling, but completely dropping. This issue hasn't, the cover wasn't received poorly. But I agree with you. I still think it's. How would it not receive uh, poorly? This is cheap tat. Uh, it, I think that's. I think cheap tat is better than what the fuck is that? That. <laughs> so well, they I, are I real. All the Doctor Who magazines are cr- across this shitty console room. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think. I think things are slightly on the way up. I mean, I think they've taken my advice there. Notice how they've ditched that font. They've ditched the Star Trek font. That's. Yeah, I do see that. It's much more. But look, Jason, mate. Look, get get me in for your covers. Right, I'll I'll get I'll yes. get your circulation, darling. Listen I'll to the man. Circulation. You get, you get everything circulating to the right organs. <laughs> yeah, well, and I'm not talking in code. Right, <laughs> right. So uh, uh, go 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 check out uh, Type Forty. Yes, uh, all out uh, Easter, and we are back this week, everybody. Uh, not with the usual live st- live show, but yeah, you're going to want to have at least one eye, uh, not that eye. I mean, you have to have at least one eye on the Type 40 channel there for some more Doctor Who talk uh, later this week. In fact, later, tomorrow, and a few times this week. So make sure, yes, uh, don't miss it, everybody, don't miss it. Uh, well, just, just, just before I go, I'll answer one, one more question from the, the chat. Why is Joe so big? It's, 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 a, it's a pack of, it's a, it's a um, uh, what is it, uh, socks, baby. It's a rolled up socks. Don't get excited, right? Don't get excited. <laughs> Fine. With that, with that, I have to go and remove my rolled up socks too. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you, Jan, for joining us. Uh, uh, we, we, I'll be back on Tuesday. My pleasure. Uh, uh, and I will be pleasuring Dan, apparently. Uh, 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 I'll be back on Tuesday and uh, to, for more debate. There's so much stuff I haven't got to. Maybe Tuesday we'll do the Millie Gibson interview. Fine. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm hitting the end broadcast button. I'm hitting 